Crusader. Howdy, partner. I got a job for y'all down on planet Zorvex. That's where you folks aim. Swing on by the Arcasuthus Bar and Grill, located between the industrial district and the sludge and depth, where the whole store. Legends say that there have been numerous disappearances on the wilderness planet. Rick. Skilled warriors have attempted to use the wilds to hold their skills and strength in the purest of environments. Rumors would have you believe that 90% of those who enter disappear without a trace. Well, that's all I can say for now. Stay thirsty, my friend. An invitation from Chip Sipper sent out to some familiar faces. Beckoning them to the planet Zorba. Very toxic and industrial, manipulated by technology and nature itself evolving in a nasty, twisted shrine. Quite a place to be heading to, but. You know that near the sludge and depth, there's some good bars. There's some good eating. Some of the best eating in the whole universe. So we find ourselves in the Arcatuthis Bar and Grill on the planet Zorvac. With a pink and orange permanent twilight. Never ending. It's always caught under a lens of amber. The entire world has an acidic tinge at the end of your tongue you can feel, like static electricity. For wood bar, uh, almost looking like a seaside shack, hanging in between an industrial district and a large open sea with a film of rainbowed oil over the top of it with a chunky consistency. Writhing wriggles, masses in the depths, come up to say hello here and there. No eyes, but only bodies. The greater mass is not known. The door opens. As it's not latched, the acidic winds of the planet Gently breezing it open. The dual door shutters make their juddering noise as you approach and stand on the outside. You know, one thing I hate about this planet, there's no night, there's no day, goddamn twilight. Well, you know, I thought it would be nice and peaceful, but you do have a point there. You don't know what's out there. Everything's weird in this planet. Well, a lot of planets we've seen are weird. Oh, I don't like this one. A familiar voice can be heard from within the tavern. Hey, get on over here. You can have one on the house. Yeah! That's my pal! Good on ya! You can hear glugging from within as there is merriment, beverages being had. You know what I said I don't like about this planet? Happy people. <laughs> Do you like much of anything, Tex? No. No. I barely you like you. Well, I know that. I don't take it personal. That's just how you are. What do you say we go pay Mr. Siffer a visit? Zipper? You know one thing I don't like? <laughs> <laughs> do, do go on, please. Oh, no, I don't want to be rude. 
Yeah, let's <laughs> let's go in. See if he's got something for us. I will go first and hold the door for you and your frail body. You know what I don't like? <laughs> People hold the doors for me. <laughs> chivalry. Reverse chivalry. <laughs> His, uh, his new hover platform kind of does this Jetson noise as he, <laughs> he walks or glides into the room. Spoils of war. I like it. Making your way on in, holding open the door. Even from beneath the hovercraft, you can see a small wriggling serpent make its way from inside of the bar with a seemingly a drink on its lips and moving its way back into the water. As soon as the door is held open and from underneath as you move past. This place seems teeming with life, but in peculiar ways. I'm surprised you didn't mention how you don't like water, because there's a lot of that here. I got a chair. I don't have to hit the floor. <laughs> I'll make sure not to splash. And I will say that these liquids um, is far from water at this point. So I will say the hydrophobic, you'll be nervous. You'll be on edge. You'll be, as you are, a little bit uneasy about this strange place. No. Is there, is there where we can talk to Chip outside? Because... Even with a chair, I'm not exactly fond of this place. <clears throat> I've seen too much hentai to know what's going on in here. <laughs> oh, well, I, I think at the last bar he was stuck behind the bar, but I'd I'd be willing to ask him for you. Or, or you could talk really loud, and I'll go outside and find a window. Talk but, really loud. Wasn't there water outside too? Oh, God. See. My old eyes, I can't see anything in this damn gloomy twilight. <laughs> well, you just close them eyes and I'll, I'll, t I'll lead your chair where we need to go. He pulls that hood over his eyes a little bit and just allows her to push him around. <laughs> push him towards the bar. <laughs> All right. So. The two of you at the start make your way into the Yarkatuthis Bar and Grill. From within, it looks like it's almost empty now. It sounded like it was incredibly rambunctious before, but now it seemingly a lot of served uh, patrons, a few vacated, and Chip Sipper is wearing his dapper outfit and cleaning a few glasses. Looks like he's doing a very thorough job. Chipping away some ice. Hey, Chip, how you been? Hey! Well, if it ain't Willa May. And look at you, it's Dex Max. Are things uh, looking spicy in the uh, game of life for you, too? Well, uh, I'm doing good. I had to fix my glasses after our last little run in, but things are good. I don't I'm not sure where ukulele went though. I mean he was following me around for a while and just disappeared one day. Oh you know ukulele. Ukulele'll show up when the time comes. We'll probably hear a song in the distance. You know the deal. Make it on in. You know, my favorite thing about him is the guitar he plays never really lines up with his lyrics or melody. Well, that how it would be sometimes. So, uh, Tex here's a little nervous of all this, uh, water you got around here. Is there anywhere dry we could talk? Well, we could take a deeper step uh, inside of this bar over here. I think you guys might feel a little more safe. Nice and secure. 
Don't have too many windows. A uh, whole lot of wood. Uh, driftwood, if you will. Used to be real dense, but the sludge and depth kind of altered it. Not much light gets through it. Trust me, it's real good. Willa May feels safe. I'll stay on this side of the bar. Push me over there. <laughs> I push him to the drier part. <laughs> All right. Oh, wood. Yeah, good. I like wood. Wood's good. So, I'm assuming you uh, saw my invitation. I sure did, so. and the last job we did was pretty exciting, so I thought we'd check it out. Well, this one's uh, quite a doozy. Something that pops up here and there. That's the strange part. On the planet Grit, out in the wild, as I've said, there's been strange disappearances. But not all the time. It seems to go on and off. That's what's curious. I'd like you to go down and investigate as it's on again. Do people go missing? How often is that? I'd say about 90% of the people that go in there, when it's on season, that is. It's a lot less if you consider the other average. I'm not a mathematician, I just, I just see thing. it how it is. This is a known thing, right? <sighs> oh, that's, that's foul. I get Sorry, I was making a drink. It tastes like poo-poo. I need to make a way better one. Sorry about that. What? Oh. That was terrible. Sorry, what was your question? Uh -oh. Just wondering if this was a known thing. Like, people going missing, like it's known? Or is this like a, a secret of that planet? Well, depends on who you ask. The deal is gladiators like to go there, warriors, what have you. They try to get a lot more hard and some more experience. Real challenge, go out in the wilds. But whenever it's on, about every few years on, every few years off, when it is on, not a lot of people make it out there. So, it's quite the spot. Sometimes it's seen as a great park. Come on down and have a picnic. Make a glorious painting. Beautiful inspiration. Or, other times you go down there and you never come back at all. So, you're saying everyone that disappeared, no one's ever made it out? Well, I'm guessing a few people have. I'm not a part of that department at all. I've just heard a few things. I've got some reliable sources. Well, I, I'm not saying I'm scared, more like cautious, but I don't, I'm worried that if we go, what if we don't come back? Well, it's a legend. And if you ever plan on being legends yourself, maybe you have to face one down, prove it fake, or say it be real. Then what do you become after that? I don't know. I don't know if that's where you're aiming at, but... Well, I got nothing to lose. Well, that's I, the spirit. I got plenty to lose, however. I, I am intrigued. Well, hey. I'm willing to compensate just like last time. Different kinds of payment. I got some... Special elements, different kinds of drinks, luxury items. But of course, I've got a got a fair share of cash. That uh, that 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 usually helps. I just want to see some good jobs done. This place needs to be cleaned up, you know. And uh, the traditional lawmen that go about these parts, I don't think, have the right mentality, you know. A little too forceful with their will. So uh. Why don't you hang around? Uh, have yourself a drink? 
And we'll hang tight until a ukulele comes on in. Well, you have. Oh, well, I think I'll try that new uh, green drink I heard about called the Gut Buster. Ah, the Gut Buster. Let me see here. Pour some of that. Get some uh, exotic lime Ricky. Uh, shake that up. A little bit of flubber sauce. Float that on top. All right, there you go, with a little bit of crystallized rock scorpion on the side. What a lovely I mean, drink. <laughs> that's the simple way, yeah, in a martini glass with a little crystal scorpion. Gives it that little thing. Hey, Tex-Mex, you want a gut buster? No. No, no. Can you Maybe. even have a drink? Drinks are wet. Maybe, uh, just put one of those scorpions in a blender. With some jerky in yeah. it. Yeah, let's, uh, take some, uh, beef jerky. Ready? Let's take some, uh, scorpions. Yeah, let's do these. Dry exoskeletons. Blend them up. Alrighty. A little bit of sand. Yeah. Real dry. A little, little dust. Yeah. Alrighty. Alright, there you go. I call this a mummy shot. There you go. That looks like sawdust. It's beautiful. Beautiful sawdust. It's incredibly dry. So it's smooth. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, there it goes. Oh, yeah. Well. Whew. I tried a little sip of that for myself, just a tiny bit. Oh, that is quite the flavor. Tinges on the end of the lip. Well, this is quite the lovely meeting, though. Hmm. Do I hear guitar in the distance? I sure do miss ukulele songs. Yeah, I could use a little bit of a tune. I have been worried about those disappearances, you know. Got a little interest in that myself. Well, I hope he didn't go disappearing in there. I don't know. You know what? If he ain't showing, and he's not coming around, and we're not hearing from him. Maybe we gotta start looking. Well, I'll stay by my post, as I do. And if y'all maybe head on out that dusty trail, down that road in the southern smokes, we'll find him along the way. Well, Throw the drinks back and, uh, let's do this. Chip Sipper, uh, makes himself a little bit of a drink. It looks like he takes some dust out of a vase, like an old ornamental vase, and takes some dust, puts that down on the bottom. Uh, gets something that sort of looks like petroleum jelly, throws about a few spoonfuls of that in there. Uh, Throws in a few what looks like crunched up old dry leaves, and then takes a little bit of uh, what looks to be tax and barbed wire, garnish and thrown in over the top. And he just harshly throws the shot glass to like the back of his face and just kind of crunches it down. That looked like a true gut buster. That was wow. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh, everyone's got their own drink. That's something I've noticed. All these different critters and creatures. A lot of us got different drinks, and, you know, gotta, gotta keep the way alive somehow, you know? Gotta keep the memory there. That was real crunchy. Am I audible? You are. Yes. All right. I guess at about this time, ukulele, Utah, maybe his Gavatar 
<laughs> get our Gavin Gristle Belly. I don't know what his name is. Comes out of the bathroom, waddles out of the bathroom with a bow legged step and a green a tint to his skin. <laughs> Do not go in there. <laughs> Ukulele, where the hell have you been? Oh, been in there. Don't go in there. Oh, Lord, what did you drink? I don't think it's what I drank, it's what I ate. Do I want to know? Same thing you guys ate. Oh, scorpions and sawdust? <laughs> well, maybe some sawdust is what I need. <laughs> Set like an old time emodium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chip, are we riding with Boogie Woogie? Boogie Woogie. Hmm. Well, for this path over here, there's actually a portal out in the desert I know about. Just one I really weird corner if you clip into it just the right way. I'm telling you, it's real weird. There's some strange places in the universe like that. Just walk into the wall, you gotta hit it. Just at like a 40 degree angle, you'll see a weird curve in the rock. It's very specific, it's in the middle of nowhere. Just gotta like walk into it like this. You see Chip Sipper do a very specific demonstration of just sort of like a crouch and like leaning into the bar. If you just go like that. Just like that, it'll activate. Very, very specific. Is that platform In... nine and three quarters? <laughs> Just kidding. Well, let me go write a little thing here. Uh, Chip Sipper writes down a, a bit of a diagram on a sturdy napkin. It is a napkin, but looks like Chip Sipper doesn't even mess around with napkins. There you go. It's a little bit of a draw up. That'll uh, that'll help when you see it. Uh, we'll hand that to Willamé. I will take it. Well, uh, I hope that this portal jumping doesn't upset your tummy, ukulele. But uh, I, th I think we're ready. I don't think much can make it worse. All of a sudden, there's a large bang, and the ground starts shaking. Oh shit! It's coming back. Chip Sipper's drinks start getting a little bit shambled as he quickly tries to stabilize them and he turns around all wide-eyed to the party. Oh boy, here we go. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I ate the dip! I ate the dip! <laughs> there's, there's another rumble from the ground. You can feel it shake from your feet up to your legs. Wait, that's it not raises me. higher. Does this have anything to do with those disappearances? What the hell is going on? Oh, I have no idea. This isn't even the right planet. After a few more rumbles, there's a voice heard. Seemingly directly from outside the Arctuthis bar and grill. Hey, 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 hey! It's time to get your asses out of me damn house! All of you, every single one of your little skinny winnies, need to get out and fetch me some damn dinny. Uh, marching around, you can hear the sound of cybernetics that are poorly made. A very specific uh, kind of grinding that is um, inherent with that. Uh, and it seems as though there is a large weapon affixed to the cyborg's arm. It seems to have maybe 50% of its original organic material from whatever it was before. You notice that the rumbling outside, after getting a little bit of a peek from the swaying doors in and out, there is a massive group of scum and villainy. Cowboys, fiends, cyborgs, all the whatnot. Robots and cowboy hats. Bounty hunters, vigilantes, sheriffs, and all other kinds of rogue lawmen and anti-heroes grouped up together. Too many to count. 
And in the middle is this voice being projected by this cyborg. Come out and play. We've been talking. All of us boys got to talking. And we figured something out. Let me tell you. We figured out. We take a bit of a pause. After all of the little bit of lawfulness that's been happening since all of your good deeds have been going. And we're all gonna get together and we're just gonna squish you in one fell swoop. We've saved up all our bullets, all our ammunition, and we've made sure not to tire our muscles out too much earlier in the day. We've drank plenty of juice and done many push-ups in preparation. Just enough. Not enough to strain! Please! If all of you are so legendary, come out and play. Come out and play. Pacing around, you hear a mechanical noise gyrating in the distance. Um, the crowd begins to howl with him. Uh, there is a whole bunch, many shapes and sizes, different creatures from many worlds, a thousand stars stand outside, ready to confront all of you. What do you do? Uh, Chip, you know anything about this? Well, I know that this isn't a very uh, kosher place to live most of the time, and this is a crazy universe. That's all I know. I don't think I got a hit on my head or anything. I'd hope not. What do you say, boys? Should we go out and meet this ragtag crew? Sure. Do it. We could always go out the back door. <laughs> well, if you we go out the back door, door, yeah, there's sort of semi-liquids back there. and I don't think your friend would appreciate that much. Well, he could go out the front door. <laughs> well, I'm uh, usually a little prepared for these occasions. But I gotta make sure I gotta hold down this place. Gotta make sure the few patrons that are in here manage to survive. And I can definitely wing that one. How about you all, uh, protect my place? I'll throw you all some extra cash or, uh, some drinks, freebies, a few other, uh, cool things I find. Well, I'll well, tune my guitar. You guys better take out the biggest guy first. <laughs> I don't think you need to worry about your place. It's us they want. And I'll put my hand on my micro-missile launcher. I'll leave it in the holder, but I'm gonna have my hand on it, and I will walk outside to face this crowd. All right. I will follow right behind, strumming a, strumming a, fucking strumming a strumming a. <laughs> what are you singing for him? Oh, well, I'm just gonna be strumming a tune right now. <laughs> Ukulele's not feeling so good. An inspirational tune. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna glide behind you guys. <laughs> Sorry. I'll address the crowd. The <laughs> I know the sound you're talking about, though. Yeah, do it now. I'll address the crowd and be like, "Well, here we are. What what can we help you with?" There is a large crowd. They seem to open up slightly so that the figure in the middle can show himself a little bit more. Well, how are you doing? Willamay, is it? I think it's Willamay. Well, Willamay, Willamay, I've got a problem today. You see this weapon here? You see the weapon on his, which is essentially his entire left arm, begin to charge. This thing's gonna fire in, I don't know, 12 seconds, 6 seconds, I'm not sure. But I've never seen anything survive the blast. Every single one of you are going to be encompassed by this. And no one is going to survive. 
I have enough confidence that you will not live this, that I will tell what will happen to all of you. Now, skip and dance! Show me what you can do! Running around, the cyborg begins to tap his heels together wildly. The spring-heeled jack of sorts begins hopping around on the shoulders of the many grunts that stand in the foreground as they begin rearing up ready to fight. But every single one of you are different. You won't fall victim to the initial strikes of shots or flurries or the initial hits. All of you have a bit more of a reflex. All of you are a lot more seasoned and have more skills than some of these basic ones. If, it is now the party's turn. If they stand directly behind me, would my amulet of protection protect them? On that first shot? What? I have that amulet of protection if yeah. my party members stand directly behind me. Yeah. Would they be protected as well? Well, if it's null, if the strike's being nullified by your barrier, then the person behind you wouldn't have to worry about anything. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna slide right. You don't know the sp <laughs> you don't know the specific nature of the attack. Effectively, this enemy has a few weaknesses, meaning he essentially describes his gimmick. He's doing his villain speech. His, his gimmick is described. He seems to have some kind of what can be described as an infinity weapon. This weapon does infinity damage. Many oh. defensive capabilities do not work against this. It is a matter of taking this guy out as fast as humanly possible. He tells wow. his gimmick, he says his thing, but it's incredibly effective. I want to, I guess, shoot my micro-missile <laughs> launcher at him. Alright. Get plus ten, right Arn, from you? Yes. With your plus 10 and my plus 10, I got 29. Nice. <laughs> All right. So you blast your micro missile launcher, fires away into the crowd. The cyborg in the center sees this and springs away, leaping out of the destructive blast that incinerates multiple of these people as you fire <laughs> off into the center of the crowd. Um, see, you see, kind of cup her hands and say, well, "I'm sorry about that, but I mean, you're on his side, so yeah." Well, you know, a bare minimum of four things just got completely eviscerated, just off cup. But you're like, oh, that's more counting the bodies after. <laughs> Boof, just blowing <laughs> out of the side. There's a spectacular color as the, uh, uh, what was used in, for the explosive device interacts with the strange atmosphere of Zorbek. Gives off a strange purple, then blue, then yellow hue at the end. That might be all I've got. Text Mighty Mac. impressive there, Willa May. It would have been better if I hit the bastard. We're getting used to that. And he holds up the staff with these the the goat skull on it and launches his rust beam at it. Mm-hmm. And he got a thir 43 to hit. Horrible. All right. Horrible. You get a 43 to hit? Yep. That will hit. 155 damage. All right. So firing off your rust beam, you slam into this cyborg, which is mostly mechanical. Directly into him as a massive clump was blasted out of the side by Willa May, you have enough passage to hit him straight on. You see all of the cybernetics turn to rust. Entirely. All that is left is the organic material. So like a leg, a few organs, a bit of the spine, brain, one eye, just flop to the ground like a fish. Looks like he's still alive, but doesn't seem to be any real threat of any sort. 
as he basically turned to jelly on the ground. Nice, Tex Mex. Oh. You can tell from the you can tell from the eye and the jabbering of the mouth. It looks like he's still trying to make some kind of attempt to loudmouth, but it's not working. I'm gonna zoom my chair up <clears throat> to him. All right. You just start moving your way over, like. <laughs> um, as as far as you are able to make it, I will say is not all the way up to him, but you're able to move through the crowd area that has been, like, blown away, effectively. But you're able to get, like, a real good, real good movement after attacking. You wanted all your talk? Did you want to die? That's what you're about to do. Alright, now, ukulele. I'm just gonna continue to play. Okay. You continue to play. You see the enemy on the ground try to fire off a weapon that isn't there anymore. That's just gone. <laughs> Entirely gone. Everything seems to be uh, stripped away. I'll give that guy a smile and a wink. Um, After after kind of like wriggling around a little bit, you notice that one of the organs looks like it's starting to inflate. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, rather than being one large group, the area of these vigilantes and bounty hunters divides into two groups as it explodes and ruptures violently. It seemed to give off some kind of last kind of desperation maneuver, but in the end, just kind of flubbed away. All right. So that being said, the group is now going to look at the party. Um, after the whole exchange and seeing what happened to the guy who tried a de facto leader, um... Let me see here. A chunk of one of the groups is going to look at Tex-Mex and just be like, Nah, fuck this, I'm out. Nah, I'm out. No, what do you mean? We're supposed to be in this together, man! You see two enemies kind of argue with each other. No, nah, dude, I'm out. That guy's scary. I don't know what he's... He's really unnerving to look at. I, I don't like it. I don't look... I'm going home... Like... I got my girl at home. I'm going to fuck everything up right now. If I don't just leave, I'm going home. All right, but you, you know what? You know what? I'm going home with you too. Yeah, fuck this. And, and you see just like a few of these guys just kind of flake off. Ugh, I don't need to be wasting my time here. <laughs> Red Row, I'm out of here. This kind of uh, serpentine ghost kind of flips around through the sky and just kind of dissipates away as there's like a few of these enemies start to be like nah if it was, I I'm fine with fighting the rest of these guys but they really dry dude he looks un unnerving I I'm going to go home and eat a large sandwich and a few people just kind of walk off like there's like a swamp thing that walks off and just goes straight through down to the sludge and depths just marching to his home with bubbles rising around his head. Um after that, uh the ones that are the ones that are left just try to continue and commence opening fire. And just like blasting. So give me a second here. All right. Does anyone have greater than 50 evasion? Nope. Not no. me. All right. So there is a volley of shots that are going to be heading towards each player. Just like shotgun rounds, sniper rounds, thrown daggers. There is going to be nonsense in like every corner. All right, give me one second here. Figure out the damage. Uh, 
All right. So let's start with let's start with Texmex. You receive eighty-eight electric damage as you are attacked with many sources. But one thing that really hits you hard was this uh, dispersible Tesla coil type device that uh, that two cowboys are holding that they seem to be partially built into. And their one unison arm is this large Christmas tree looking like command and conquer Tesla coil. Um, next, we'll go to Willa May. You are also attacked with a large barrage, but there is an icy shotgun that seems to catch you really bad as you receive 86 cold damage. And I got that threshold plate on. Does that reflect some back? Yes, or you have your... I have, first, I have the amulet of protection, so that Which should absorb you don't that. Take... Mm -hmm. Okay, and then after that, I'd have the, pl the breastplate. I'm just trying to stay alive. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, like, you, there is a barrage of shots that head your way, but between the ones that you evade and the shielding and defensive capabilities that you possess, nothing manages to harm you. And ukulele. Ukulele, you are also attacked with quite a barrage, but there is a large acid grenade specifically that detonates overhead and splashes onto you pretty bad as you receive 99 acid damage. I love acid damage. Very extra cleansing. Springs extra down. As well. The bright neon rain. Just takes that whole first layer of skin off, you know? Very clean. <laughs> all right. Um, so, besides that, all the other shots and attempts at attacks miss. Uh, a lot of these are not the most, the best or most trained of warriors. But a few of them will begin to try to approach uh, making the group back in one unison and starting to get closer, trying to close the distance. So some can get within melee range if they need to. Um, besides that, like, yeah, the area looks all messed up, like a big chunk from the massive uh, shot fired earlier, and the terrain's starting to get a little muggy. And it is now the player's turn. How close is Tex-Mex? Um, well, both of you roughly, I, I would say, like, both of you walked about six squares out away from the Architutus bar and grill, roughly, and then positioned maybe a few other squares out between, like, movement. So, um, you're all within, like, a reasonable proximity to each other. You're all, like, what, like, two squares away from each other? <laughs> to the bad guys? Um, as far as the enemies, there's some that are about three squares away, there's some that are two, there's some that are further away, there's still a, somewhat of an amount, but a lot were blown away, and a lot were terrified of Tex-Mex, and with the bonuses from Ukulele, it's, it's, it's taken out the group, but it was still a very large mass. Okay, because my micro-missile launcher is 24 squares. So I need to make sure not to combine Tex-Mex and myself into that. Mm -hmm. So I guess I want to shoot at a point where I can try to get the most enemies, but not get us. Okay, so you're trying to shoot like as, like, as further out as you can, but still encompassing the most, most enemies. Yes. Yep, that's a pretty fairly logical straight shot. Cool. It I'm doesn't... It. It... All right. <laughs> There's a big God group. <laughs> damn it! 23 with my bonuses. <laughs> I switched dice. I'm getting 23 with your bonuses. Uh, very similar kind of thing. You, you, you notice that uh, a few of them look, look up in the air. Uh, specifically, you see like uh, two gas mask wearing humanoids. Um, 
that looked like they were about to be struck by it. One taps the other one on the shoulder and is like, look up, start shooting, start shooting. And they start shooting the projectile midair. And a few of them seem to like dodge roll away from it. But the debris totally wipes out a whole bunch of other ones that were not able to get out of any kind of a path, having no evasion at all. Um, so you I'm see gonna... at least three get crushed from the wayside. I'm going to side-eye Tex-Mex and be like, I don't know why they're coming after me. I ain't no kind of threat. <laughs> it's that missile launcher. If you only knew how to use it. Well, it's the glare in my glasses from this bright, bright twilight. <laughs> <laughs> Very sparkly down here. <laughs> I'm done. All right, standing your ground. Uh, Tex Max. Okay, so I didn't kill that cyborg, right? So the uh, the cruel doesn't work yet because that's only if I kill someone, right? Uh, cruel. Yeah. Uh, which one's which one's cruel? It was a weakness, right? Where? Yeah. Um, after you kill someone, you must spend a move action butchering the body. Um, that would be where you are probably motivated to at least like finish this guy or something. That's what I was thinking. But the thing, but the thing was, he ended up blowing up. Okay. The guy, the the cyborg was blasted, and then he was on the ground for a bit. One of his organs inflated to a large size. He uh, detonated, and the large group divided into two. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that I didn't have to go over there and start beating on that whatever's left of him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Anyone that has been hit so far has been, like, blown away. Okay. So there's currently no one injured. <laughs> there's just some completely blown away, decimated, floating around in the sludge and depths. Um, All right, I'm going to take out my pistol. I don't want to use everything up. So... He's going to aim at the nearest one. Mm Mm-hmm. With a 23. Shannon, I swear to God. 23. All right. Last time I was rolling amazing. (laughs) You give a shot. Um, The one moving forward is one of these uh, gas mask wearing humanoids with an assault rifle. Um, But you managed to shoot past who you were aiming at. But you do hit this large dinosaur guy who was behind him, like, right in the chest. Sweet. So These these groups are still fairly dense. So 77 damage plus 20 acid damage from corrosive. All right. Hey, so, yeah, that is a very large large sized critter and it is now has an open chest cavity and it looks like one of those uh like dino damaged Jurassic Park figures with like the exposed ribs and stuff. Looks like it's still going, but it it's very, 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 very damaged. <laughs> now I have that commercial in my head. Dino damage <laughs> All right. And ukulele. I am going to strum a magnificent note, not the brown note, but to strum a magnificent note three times from my weird guitar and shoot healing beams, one into Tex-Mex and two into Willa May. I didn't get hurt. Or not. I'm not hurt yet. Two into Tex Mex. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Minus ten. But how's this thing work? Minus twenty to hit. However, you're willing, so you're considered a ten. Oh yeah, I gotta. I got a 24 after penalties and a 77 after penalties to hit you twice, Tex-Mex, for 
40, 53 healing. And uh, I'll continue to play my guitar with uh, with multitask. All right. Continuing to play the guitar, the uh, the group of enemies is going to begin to look really hostile. They're going to start to close in. They're beginning to charge. They're throwing punches and daggers and shots. Some of them trying to use energy attacks, limited psychic experience, all different manners of things, but none of them are managing to harm any of you. You got enough spring in your step. These, uh, these 40s and 13s and None of these are enough to hit any of you, and you're doing real good. Blocking these hits, evading them, seeing the shots, ducking behind cover momentarily. Um, and there is a barrage. The it, like There is a slight shadow from the amount of objects that are heading your way between enemies and uh, projectiles alike. But at the end of the large wake... It seems that everything stands firm. No other attacks seem to come forth at all. And it is now the player turn, as all the enemies seem to suddenly have a terrible realization that they are out of their league. Y'all get! Get out of here! You ain't worth Two plug nickels. Yeah, I'll bet they're scared of me. I'm going to start playing a frightful dirge. All right. Between the... Uh, the uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't know if I should even go first. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was in, like... Uh, with with the uh, with the song assistance and Tex Mex's natural intimidation, already kind of going forward from from his actions, this is going to the group is going to begin to dissipate more. There's a few of the cowards that seem to start running off, like the group is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, especially like right around, go on, get a bunch immediately left on that. Did not stick around to hear anything else. Like, kind of knew what was going to happen next if they if they hang around. There seem to be, like, a few stragglers that are kind of, like, sort of hanging on, but it looks like a lot of them are just, like, bailing at this point. Running away, running back to the factories, back down to the seas, and all the various dark nooks and crannies of the planet Zorvek. Well, I'm going to spit some blood onto the ground. Like maybe we could find a doctor. You always need a doctor. <laughs> it's kind of hard to shoot yourself with your magical healing guitar. Uh, <laughs> what What if you got a mirror? Shot into a mirror. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. <laughs> and, uh, well, I don't know how hard it would be, really, but it sounds kind of weird to me. After the dust settles a little bit, Chip Sipper can be heard from within the Architutus bar and grill. Well, uh, this is, uh, quite a crazy mess we've had here. Well, head on in, I'll, uh, give you guys a quick patch up and can send you on the way. Oh yeah, I'm thinking all of you are gonna do pretty good. Uh, Chip Sipper seems to uh, ad admire a bit of the cleanup that was done. Uh, looking around, leaning from out the bar, still not like walking around necessarily, still kind of affixed to where he is. Definitely a good job. I really appreciate giving him the giving him the good spooky. That really worked. It really got him out of there. Definitely preferable to, you know, smashing them around like mashed potatoes. Uh, Chip Super invites you in, and after uh, 
a few nice beverages and some quick R&R, a &R, little bit of a rest, some stretching, <laughs> bit of a bit of a think about well, that was a, some strange happenings. Alrighty, so if everyone's feeling chipper, can send you on the way. It's right about round where they came from. If you keep on heading straight, they probably walked right past it. What happened to the guy with the big weapon? The instigator guy. He's dead. Oh, he died. He didn't, he didn't do pretty well. Uh, from what I saw, pouring a few drinks and maintaining the peace, Seems as though he was hit with that rust beam real hard. He had uh, way too many mechanical body parts. Way too much of that to handle anything. He was completely blasted away. and I don't know, whatever kind of strange creature he was before. Uh, at something where he tried inflating an organ and detonating himself as a desperation move. But I think he tried to maybe inflate himself like helium and fly at you guys? But I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a biology expert. Just a bartender. So, uh, why do you think they were coming after us? Well, you guys have been, uh, causing a little bit of a stir. Done a few good deeds, and, uh, they aren't really used to that around these parts. That's why I try to stay, uh, Doing my job and keep my lips sealed for the most part. Let other people kind of do the work, take the glory if they want. Just try to point them in the right direction. Well, I'm ready to go uh, kick some ass after that. I'm ready to follow you wherever you go. The doors swing open. Uh, chip points out to the desert. And on straight that way. Can't miss it. And the march begins. Out through the wilderness. We should take some water. <laughs> Big bags of water. I sure would hate to get thirsty out there. Hey, uh, Tex, you want to carry our water on your little scooter? Yeah, it no. sure would help us. <laughs> we don't want to get too tired, too encumbered. You look and really strong. Tex just leaves the, the bar and heads in the direction that Chip told him to. <laughs> All right, so... He's hovering out. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll follow with the snicker, giving Tex a hard time. You walk through the, uh, the area of destruction previously done as it's slowly being cleaned up by, by some other locals that are cleaning up the bodies, frisk fishing them out of the sludge and depths. There's some sea monsters, like, dragging them away, like these large serpents, like, pulling away some of the bodies. Uh, one of the locals leans up. Oh, hey! He's just dragging away, like, uh, a whole bunch of corpses. How is everyone doing? Oh, have fun in your adventure! You just dra drag, dragging around a few corpses uh, in into a pile, like patting his hands together at the end of it with a big grin on his face. Sounds like he's from the north. <laughs> <laughs> so, so make making your way on through. Uh, you're passing the area of the sludge and depths. You see some of those uh, serpents, as I mentioned, taking up a few few of those bodies. They look to be vibrant colors, varying in size, but it looks as though that there's small ones over there, similar to like a tide pool, um, as you see larger ones off in the distance. One one little hump off in the distance that seemed to be something in the horizon, you notice, has moved since and seems to be a large version of one of these strange creatures. They're making... Uh, Almost a dolphin, large whale, uh, cetacean noises as they move around in the depths. But after some time, it turns away from the, the liquid of the depths and goes further down near the warehouses. 
in the industrial district. And it looks like straight through there, a clean straight shot, a little bit of a turn right at the end, and you'll be there. All right. So after a bit of a walk, a little bit of sightseeing in Zorvec, past the industrial district, there are these large warehouses. You can hear many things, people, animals, entities, all the above, scampering around in some of these warehouses like mice in a leftover tuna can. Um, this area seems to be um, abandoned these warehouses, at least most of them seem as though they were for something else. Leftover warehouses, factories. Some of them seem to be under operation, but not the intended use. And after some scampering, you can hear the voices inside of these structures um, moving around, and you can see the eyes glare back, some orange and red and yellow eyes. You can hear your names being uttered under their breaths as they're kind of scampering around, almost in fear. Whispers of legends as you make your way through unscathed. Had you would not have the reputation, uh, reputations that all of you have, might have gone a little different, but they seem to give you a pass. As you begin to you make your way through what you could describe as a desert. I bet you're right at home here, huh, Tex? Yeah, this is the life. The best. Arid and dry. A few areas have a little bit of a strange squish to them. It seems as though the whole grounds is made out of a strange patchwork. A cross between organic and inorganic. Uh, this area is definitely defined by how dry it is. Dry, colorful, vibrant, and with a strange kind of tropical smell in the air. Around the squishy parts, that has more of a diesel fuel kind of aroma. It's a real pretty place. Drink a little water, swish it around in my mouth, and spit it out. Careful, very careful not to hit Tex Mex with it. Most Sometimes. of these places we go to aren't very pretty. Splashing onto the ground, you notice that the water seems to hydrate a part of the ground, which seems to inflate in a kind of small orb shape atop the mass. Gross. I'll just ignore that and keep walking. I think kind of wriggles it. I think we should have gotten a car. <laughs> Maybe a wagon. Well, I asked after Boogie Woogie, but uh, we got interrupted. <laughs> I sure now thought. All... No, all of you are very close to a strange rock which looks to be made out of that squishy substance. The less dry but partially squishy diesel fuel kind of material. On the image it looked as though as it was solid stone or, or marble. But who not seeing it in person, it's a different color and everything. Everything seemed a little off. But it seems as though there it is. It matches the image, at least from what you can tell. You can try to investigate further, but it seems as though you've come upon where you're heading. You talking about, like, the portal door? Yep. Well, I trust Chip, so I wouldn't investigate. Is anyone going to stop me or just see what happens? What are you doing, going through the portal? I'm going to crouch down like he showed us how to walk through it and just walk towards it. Crouch and lean into it. Well, I'm going to follow you from a couple squares behind. Playing an ominous tune. <laughs> All right. Yep, I'll follow him. 
So given that crouch all lined up like a Scooby Doo cartoon, moving to the to, to, to the to the beat of the song as it plays in the background, step by step by step, perfectly crouched as Chip showed you, instructions in hand. I would like every single one of you to give me a roll. And this will be trying to get on in there. You guys should be plus ten. Well, with plus ten, I got forty-seven, so we're going up. All right. I got a sixty-six. All right. Those those are all enough. Where all of you get the formation, it seems to work one over another in the end, making your way through, and you notice that each of you kind of like squish into it, and as your whole body goes into it, you realize. Oh, from the outside, my whole body shouldn't fit in this. And it seems to keep going and going as it gives off a very piney, sweet diesel sort of aroma as you squish through this strange, spongish kind of material. After the other. Then you feel a falling sensation. As you feel all of you begin to fall, there's a scent of tobacco in the air. A whiskin scent of whiskey. You very briefly uh, feel this falling sensation before it is taken away. And then you feel your feet land on solid ground. You are in the middle of a forest. It smells a tiny. Forest? No, too bad. No, nope, it's more of a. It's more of a piney, tall trees, pine, whole bunch of vegetation. Um, as far as from what you can look around, you don't see any life forms. There's a lot of foliage, though. A lot of green, leafy foliage. I left my machete at home. This smells like this... Christmas. What's Christmas? Oh, it's a little celebration we used to have back at home. We would uh, chop down a couple trees and start a fire, big old bonfire, and worship our pagan gods. <laughs> we call that Hexmas. It seems as though all of you are now on the planet of... There is a ginny-type smell in the air of this pine citrus notes. The air feels smooth. Everything has a delayed, buttery after effect that you can feel on the outside of your body in the form of a faint tingle. I don't know if I hate this or love this. Uh, can we look around for signs of which way anybody would have gone, or is that clear to us? Yes, uh, I would say, um, tell me specifically what you aim to do, and then we can do some rolls from there. Well, I don't have any bonuses or anything towards anything like this, but I would think I was looking for a path, like a worn down path, or maybe signs I'm gonna signs play an inspirational of... tune. Yep, uh, signs of where people have gone, broken branches, anything like that. Mm-hmm, okay. Paths of travel. All right. <sighs> 19 <laughs> oh <my God>. okay <laughs> looking around past the greens and the foliage you don't seem to find any trails no footprints broken branches um no animals uh as far as from what you could tell no no bugs no none of that I think that gut buster's kicking in one way or the other well, I don't drink at my table. You probably should stop drinking now. Well, I only have the one. That's enough. I just know. Stop completely. Just stop it. Just. <laughs> oh man. What about this guitar guy? Does he do anything other than play guitar? 
I sure don't. <laughs> I never thought so. <laughs> well, do you guys see any, like, path we should follow? Or should we just start walking in a direction? I think we should do anything you want to do, Will and May. You're the boss. Let's just set the, all this shit on fire. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't do that. Perfectly content waiting for you to find a way out of here. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I could roll again, but... <laughs> Just roll a D360 and tell us which direction <laughs> we're going in. <laughs> I rolled a negative three. <laughs> okay, um... I don't know what else I would be looking for. Does anyone else want to make a any kind of an attempt? You don't need to be trained in it, per se. You can make any kind of real thought. Gonna, the the I'm more the more specific to, you are, the more it, it'll help you roll. I'm gonna walk up to Tex Mex and just kinda shove play the guitar like right in his face, a really aggressive, kind of uh passive aggressive inspirational tune. I probably shouldn't do that. It's probably really annoying to edit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're fine with that. Um <laughs> I'm gonna play like right next to your ear while you're trying to look around. You gonna play me some Lincoln Park? <laughs> I got a 49 to see if I can detect any forms of intelligent life, I guess, like noises or smoke or hear anything that's not typical forest sounds. Not directly around you. <laughs> After taking a nice pause and you have a bit of silence, you're able to silence. <laughs> you're able to well, no silence. within his within his own mind, within his own mind, just like a moment of soft tranquility where he's able to understand. Okay, you you notice that you hear something. Yeah, you don't know what it is, but after getting a little bit of a seating, you're like, okay, forest. This this is this is a forest. You generally know what a forest is. The trees might be some weird thing or follow a different evolutionary path, but that's totally irrelevant. But you notice that there is a sound, and you aren't a hundred percent sure what that is. You can't discern what it is, but you notice that. Some sort of sound of interest. It's like a scraping. It's like a wood against wood kind of scraping that wouldn't happen from the wind or casually. I pull my my sidearm and I just go towards the sound. All right, drawing your sidearm, you head towards the sound. Um, heading in that direction, um, you notice that over the hill there looks to be a bit of a swamp. Fudge. God. Guys, I need a bridge. You got Anybody got a bridge in their pocket that you can just put over this thing? <laughs> I don't like... Oh, man. The swamp seems to have some dry spots with rocks, but as per your weakness and your fears, oh, you would still definitely indeed need a bridge. But with some bridge and some fixtures, it might be traversable. Well, I don't want to walk through the swamp either, but I mean, we got to find a way across. Why don't we go around it? Or are we pressed for time? Well, I mean, we could try to find a way around it, see what happens. I mean, I'm not I'm not exactly clear why we're here anyway. <laughs> why, oh. why is that, Willem May? What are we doing here? Did you miss all of that? <laughs> I might not have hit, gotten that. Um. <laughs> Shit well, is full. <laughs> people are going disappearing here every few years. It goes on yeah. and off, and about 90% of the people right now that come in here disappear, and we're trying to find out why. Well, why the hell did we come in here? 
That's what I said, random, but... A random disappearance? <laughs> well, I mean, if it happens years and years, I don't think we're in any kind of hurry. We might as well just walk casually around the swamp. <laughs> as, uh, Chip that. Sipper... As, uh, Chip Sipper mentioned before, um... There, it isn't, it seems to be at least on years right now, where there seems to be rapid disappearances. He has his concerns. He's employing the group, whether it be financial or whatever other means they want from it. Chip Sipper just wants to see a good deed done because he's not 100% sure what it is or what's going on. But there have been disappearances recently. Well, I'm up for uh, trying to walk around it for a while, so let's try that. I mean, unless we can find a tree that's as tall as the swamp is wide. I would surely play an inspirational tune while you guys chop it down. With what? The way my day is going, I will cleave myself right in half. <laughs> I am not going over it. I am not going near it. I'm not going under it. I'm going around it. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> After uh, deciding where to go, Tex-Mex begins his trek around the swamp where it is indeed dry. It is dry over there. The other areas, they're real wet. And there's a lot of just, that's, like more obvious water or something more akin to water than even with the sludge and depth. What does the rest of the party do as Tex Mex goes bah and just go, goes on over to the dry high ground? I was willing to follow, go around, so I'll follow and see if anything happens in the meantime to get us across. And of course, All I right. follow. Willa May by a few uh, squares behind. All right. A few squares behind. Going over on this big curvature over to the high ground. And there looks to be more like hills over here. A little bit more of a uh, hilly area that's overlooking the swamp. And a lot of this looks to be... Uh, very natural. As you walk around, you see that there's like a few benches that are made. You see a few ign like uh, initials carved into rocks and whatnot. You're starting to see more of the sights of like a park. Um, you see like an old, abandoned, like worn out, uh, discolored uh, uh, picnic blanket. And just like kind of like various things like that as you're walking around. This is uh, really weird. It looks like someone got snatched right out of their picnic. I'm going to play something spooky. <laughs> if I investigate that scene, will we, will we get any more information or is that it? You can always look into things further. You want to look into one of those things further? Oh, the picnic, I guess. Um, I don't really know what I'm looking for. Maybe signs of why. You better look in the picnic box. How they disappeared, including basket. the picnic bo basket. The picnic basket. I'll get you your picnic basket, boo-boo. Thanks, Yogi. <sighs> 30. With All my right. inspirational tune? Well, yeah. My god. <laughs> <laughs> it's old, it's tapered, it's discolored. It was definitely some kind of a uh, picnic blanket. Um, And you notice specifically where it is uh, stuck on the side of a tree. Like you see some initials, you see what looks to be like a leftover child's toy. Um... That looks to be torn in half. Just kind of uh, very like weathered. It looks like cauterized around on the end that it was like ripped off of. Um, there's just kind of like various sites. A lot of these human objects look incredibly worn. Like it's been a while since 
um, it was like a real good, suitable place to like casually bring people. But as Chip said, it's it's been known as a place to casually bring people, and it's also been known as a place where hardened gladiators would really go in to try to see something to test themselves, and pretty much no one no one has come back. Well, you know, I don't have children of my own, but I would not bring them here knowing this is going on. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Moving your way through the hills, um, you you pick up on that scent of pine once again as you are standing in a in a uh sorry you're standing on like a plateaued area atop the mountains uh you went from hills to mountains to a plateau not steep crazy ice covered peaks but nice gentle casual breeze and you notice on your walk no squirrels no no analog for that no tiny creatures no bugs no no nothing just seems to be plant life. Different kinds of uh, plant life vines. The vines seem to be of some kind of strange exotic variety where they seem to be moving. They seem to have some kind of motion, but it doesn't seem to be deadly. They look to have no force. Walking around casually on one seems to break them. So it's slightly alien. It's a very slightly alien environment where... Being here further, you all of you can at least deduce no animals might be normal for here. It smells good. And you stand atop a peak. Does anyone have any other deductions to make? The, uh, that smell of pine is coming from these branches or if it's coming from somewhere else? You can give me a perception roll. <laughs> hey, Shannon, get this. I got 109. <laughs> All right. You know everything about this excellent scent. Uh, you can tell that this scent is a combination of the vines, the dying vines mixing together with the trees themselves. But they seem primarily to come from the vines on the ground which uh, largely seem to be the main supporter in the ecosystem. The vines seem to fill the place that earthworms or small um, uh, ground-dwelling creatures would possess, fertilizing the soil, moving around, uh, also working as uh, pollinators in strange ways. Um, and it seems that the scent is from the work of these things, also linking to those strange those strange squishy objects that you moved through, there seems to be a bit of a connection between them. Uh, some planets are a lot more material. Some planets sometimes have more spiritual aspects and cosmic aspects, and this seems like it might be one of them. Um, Does it seem I, sentient? Or it's just... I don't know. Uh, as far as sentience goes... It seems to be the vines and many of these plants and living things, they seem to be pretty aware, and they seem to be able to move. They just don't see, they still seem to have no need for predatory response of any kind. There doesn't seem to be any predation or like parasitism or anything like that. They just seem to be hanging around, absorbing sunlight and nutrients from the ground and hanging around doing their thing. It looks to be completely creatureless. Okay. Well, I know you said we stepped on them earlier, but I'd like to try to avoid that from now on. I think we should go to them. I, I crouch down to one of the little plants and say, um... Hey, little buddy. Does anything it kind happen? Of, uh, <laughs> it kind of wriggles around three little extensions, almost like three fingers kind of raise up uh, almost in a response. 
You might be the cutest little thing I ever saw. Can you understand me? It seems to move around in a very slow, like, slither motion. Like, non-intimidating, no sudden movements. It just seems to kind of be moving around. Like, acknowledged you and then seems to be moving through the soil. Uh, picking up various chunks of what could be seen as, like, rocks or what could be rocks that seems to be that same material as seen before on the other planet of Zorvek. These strange, squishy, portal-like materials. Well, I, I think I'm stumped. <laughs> so after some time, all of you take a little bit of a walk and of a nice, relaxing environment out in the nature. Sent moving around to check things out, hearing some... Some scratches, can't really deduce where. Just kind of hanging around and not finding out a whole hell of a lot. Can I look for more signs of people? I mean, we're still on the move, right? Or are we still on top of this peak? Um, you moved around from the lower levels up into the higher levels, um, investigating, looking around, and... It seems as though that there are other areas to look around, but as of right now, that would be the swamp um, further outward where you haven't explored. There's like a bit of a plains area. I'm all for moving on into the plains. Sounds fun to me. Unless you want to go back to that swamp there, Tex-Mex. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Uh I'm thinking we should pretend to be on a picnic and we grab all the stuff and we act like we're just normal folks having a vacation. Uh, I'm going to sing not... a song about how we're just normal folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you can pass for normal folks, but I mean, I'm willing to try. Maybe I'll do a little Joe Walsh. I'll be like, we're just ordinary, normal <laughs> picnickers. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sinister, not investigating a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so after being sent down here on a mission, confusion and kerfuffle, now there's a bit of merriment and songs being had as... You begin to make your way down the hill to the plains. Out, out in the open plains, it looks more familiar. It looks oddly familiar to all of you in a way. Being from these similar parts, uh, the sight of the wide open plains, nice and clear, tall grass. I feel like all of you have seen Different planes, not the same planes, but maybe some from childhood or some mission or some event. But out on the fields. As Is you it begin. The same little, like, plant creatures in the plane? It looks as though some of them are hanging around, <sighs> weaving between these tall stalks. These tall stalk kind of plants which uh, look to be kind of fleshy and squishy, um, almost caterpillar-like. Squishy legged sticking into the ground. Kind of uh, just like moving around, doing its thing, swaying in the wind. And as all of you move your way on in, entering in on the planes, everything is looking real nice. From behind you, you suddenly hear a sound. With that sound, everything becomes dark all of a sudden. And there is a lunge. All of you have enough of a reaction where you're all able to, to turn around and see something so big that it looks like it's about to encompass all of you. Let me very quickly do some here. Uh, that's a minimum of 57, so I should hit everyone. All right. 
see here. Okay. So, firstly, the entire party is going to receive 95 slashing damage. Amulet! <laughs> All right, your amulet activates, blocking out that first initial hit. Upon this impact, you are all able to realize what is happening before it finishes its attack, and we move on to the player turn. All of you in horror realize that out leaping from the swamp is a massive, colossal, snapping turtle. It looks as though on the in-betweens, where its arms meet its carapace and armor, are hairs. It looks as though it's a large alligator snapping turtle, but covered in hair. Morphology is a little bit different, but almost like a mammalian colossal giant snapping turtle. And it seems to have lunged at everyone from behind in a sudden strike. Okay. All right. So the follow-up from here is... Let me see... I want to see if it does a grab. Uh, Willow May, could you give me a grapple check? Are you playing ukulele? Oh, absolutely. You know it. 80! Alright. That is going to be enough where between your amulet, you notice that its jaws try to continuously bite down on you but you are able to get out of the jaws quickly while you still have your invulnerability frames. Just moving out of reach as the jaws clench shut. As this happens, you notice that its strange reptilian eyes are affixed on your amulet. Its eyes doodling around like that of a chameleon, uh, jolting around in all different directions, but occasionally completely focusing every other few movements on the amulet itself. You're gonna have to take this off my cold, dead body, turtle. Turtle. <laughs> turtle, turtle. I'm gonna play a challenging song. You wanna, we wanna, we want to um, accent the, the, the challenge that, uh, that uh, Willa May has laid out towards this turtle. That's my pencil, asshole. It's better than saying it the other way around, I guess. <laughs> That's his pencil, and I'm the asshole? <laughs> That's my asshole, pencil. <laughs> Take that, pencil. <laughs> Ow. Now just put it back in the drawer. <laughs> All right. So, uh, a massive turtle jumped out from behind the party, tried to do a big old bite. Will May's invincibility helped nullify some damage for the party, stopping that big old bite. And it seems as though it tried to go for a sneak attack, but all of you were looking around well enough where it did not successfully get off a critical hit on that 95 damage. So, that being said, after this, this large dive in, in, a, in an attempt at a big old snap, you see this massive turtle get up on its hind legs oh. and starts, like, rearing up at the party, letting out a mighty roar. In doing so, it seems to have this thick lion's mane type thing covered in algae. Um... And from their long gills, like uh, an axolotl, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Those salamanders with the things. <laughs> They've like got those gills. So it's like a large gilled turtle kaiju-esque thing. Not full scale like the largest of kaijus, but very big next to a normal sized gladiator even. How... It is now the party's turn. How tall exactly? 
Uh, it would be the largest size category. So it wouldn't be medium. It wouldn't be large. It would be huge. So if I that aim takes up at... nine squares. Oh, oh shit. I was going to say it's if I aim at big. his head. But if I aim at his head, he's probably close enough to hit us, huh? Maybe he's tall you can to you can aim at the head. It's very big, so it's not um, it's not the most evasive. It does it doesn't look to be the most. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to dodge shots too well. Very very big. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not hitting us. All right, well I will aim at his big disgusting head with a ninety. Yeah. All right. I know. That is, a, that is a 90 called shot top of the head. That is going to work. Uh, give me some damage. <laughs> Three. Uh, I know. Weird, huh? <laughs> Where am I? Very strong piercing. So very mm -hmm. strong is largest of 3D100. Okay. Once again, do I get both plus 10s on my damage or just my hit? Um, I think you get plus 10 on all rolls from, from the musical bonus. Okay, and my micro missile says plus 10, but is that just when I hit or when I damage? That's your plus 10 to hit. Okay, okay. Plus 10 to damage from Arn. So, mm -hmm. I got 88 damage. All right. So, uh, give me a second here, because that's going to be 88. Um... Uh, and what damage type again? Uh, very strong piercing. All right, piercing. All righty. So this is a called shot at the head. This is going to do extra damage because of that. Because you're aiming directly at the head. That kind of a strike to a turtle kind of thing. You're going to see the micro missile launcher rupture. It seems to be very armored and chitinous, this, uh, this uh, bulky body of this turtle where... It's going to take a lot of strikes to do something, but you notice that the force makes it actually flinch, close its eyes, and start to tuck its head into its shell as it's standing, as it flinches upon that large impact of... Like, this would be enough to take out many foes, but you just see it makes it kind of flinch, tuck its head, close its eyes, looks a bit smoldered, its mane looks a little messed up, and then it starts untucking its head and seems to... Uh, take up a bit of an angry expression on its on its eyes. You see it start to get more of a firm brow and seriousness. You started uh, is there, it. Is there anything else you do with your turn? Nope. All right. Oh, just give me one second here. Hang on. All right, I am back. Um. Oh, we are getting to the other players. That's right. Giant turtle. What, what does the rest of the party do? I'm going to pull out the staff and shoot my decay beam. I might as well do it now while I can. All right, decay beam. 67 to hit. That is going to hit. Uh, where are you aiming specifically? Very big turtle. Um, middle of the, the, the shell. All right. That is going to hit. Uh, give me some damage. Two hundred and ten. Was that two hundred and ten? Yeah. Yep. All right. You notice that you significantly soften that middle section of the shell to where it seems to be completely worn off, and rather than being kind of that stretchy extra skin that you'd normally see with kind of that undershell area with, with tortoises, it seems to be much more hardened and uh, not, not with the hair as much. Uh, but it looks as though there is now an opening in the armor on its chest. Do you do anything else with your turn? To move a little bit away from whatever area of effect that Willa May has. So if she starts blasting this thing, I'm not going to get hit with her blasts. 
Okay. You're going to move as far as you can so that you have some safety. But still not in the water. Alrighty. Does that complete the party's turn? Ukulele no. just playing? Okay. No. I'm going to, uh... So I'm actually using a... Uh, technically a healing assault rifle that's built into my guitar. I'm going to shoot Tex-Mex twice. And shoot myself once? Shoot <laughs> myself in the foot or something? Yeah. Seems kind of cheesy, but uh, I guess I'll do it. So let's shoot Tex-Mex a couple of times. And uh, I actually missed both times. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a three and a seven. I so, am uh, rubbing off. No healing for you. I did manage to oh, shoot myself oh. for 23 healing. Oh, so so the three roll uh, would be... That would be a failure roll. <laughs> which would effectively end the turn. And I will... I will say you you try to do the healing bullet. You shoot close to Tex Mex. It knocks up a bit of shrapnel that's going to go into Tex Mex and hurt him a little bit. Uh, Tex Mex, you take twenty four acid damage. Whoops! God, not so easy to heal now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little out of tune. Nothing personal. The massive turtle lets out a mighty roar. Uh, it begins to start up a stride, which is much faster than what you would think, rather than going to... Like, it seems to, like, start off on, on two legs. It then goes to all fours, and it is going to take a massive lunge, extending its mighty neck. Getting out its massive maw, trying to make impact on Willa May. But Willa May has that special armament. So rather than taking this uh, very, 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 very hefty damage, it is going to be nullified as you see once again the maw of the turtle um, clasped around you, staring at the amulet. Um. The next thing that it is going to do. Oh, geez. Uh, so the next thing it's going to do. It is going to uh, stick out its tongue. It's long, wriggly, strange, lure-like tongue. And due to it rolling a 97, it is going to remove the amulet from around Will and May's neck. Kill this motherfucker. <laughs> so, that being said, you are not going to take the full brunt of this attack, but you are going to take uh, some of it. Let's see. That is going to be 93 slashing damage. Okay, so my armor takes 20 of that off. So would it so be 73? Yeah. So then on the threshold reflector, would I then do the 73 or the full amount? Does that make sense? Cuz it's the damage you take minus 50 times 2 and he takes it back. Yep, yep, yep. I can factor that. The okay. Damage you take minus yeah, the damage you take, minus 50. Yep. Okay, cool, So that's going to cool. reflect a bit. Um, yep. And awesome. So yeah, it seems as though you you only take... Um, you only took partial of that attack as you see uh, the jaws begin to try to clench in on you. Um, also, could you give me a grapple roll? What if I said no? <laughs> Then it might smush you. <laughs> and we don't want Nin that. 96. All right. Um, is that natural? Or is that no, with, with the uh, bonuses? That's, uh, with the plus 10, and I cannot okay. it. Awesome. So, um, yeah, you managed to 
break out of the jaws, you give like a good snap out, you notice that it has your amulet in its mouth though as its jaws close. Um, so besides that, the other two members of the party are effectively being thrashed at by these other two arms as it kind of ran and did that big neck stretch and everything else. Um, so just by its body writhing around the other arms and legs, those attacks are gonna... So let's see, that's a 65 and a 63. So those hit. And let's see... Damage! What are we gonna get? Okay... All right. So that is going to be um 93 bludgeoning damage on ukulele. Nice. As you are very much smooshed by a big turtle that went bipedal to quadrupedal just slapping down and Texmex is going to receive 86 slashing damage as you are mainly caught by the shell and the razory ends of these of the claws of this beast. I'm going to use my um, perfect defense. Okay. Um, using the perfect defense, you nullify the damage. Thank God. Um, all right. And I will also say, this has not effect yet, but you notice that the strange algae material stuck on its gills and its hairs seem to have some kind of weird effect to it. You can't make out what... It seems to have a little bit of, like, a, a cling, almost like if you're wearing a, a whole bunch of heavy clothes and you jump in a pool. It seems like it's trying to weigh you down, but it's not It's not working properly. All of you um, are still kicking, and it seems to need to do something to kick in right. You feel a little bit of that weight, though, like after battling it, almost like you're in a nightmare and you can't run from something. Um, that will complete Turtle's turn. And we got players. So, he's on all four, and I can't get to that soft spot in his shell now, right? He is on all fours right now, currently, yes. I want to shoot him in the face again. Pretty easy to do. The face is right there. Go for it. <clears throat> Well, yeah, it's on all four, so you might want to be careful with the micro missile launcher. Unless you have trigger happy, then then you gotta. I don't have trigger happy, but he's got my amulet, and I'm pissed. <laughs> oh no! Okay. What? So, if, even if I hit him, it's no. Oh. What did you do? He took well, my amulet, so the first hit at him is probably going to be canceled out. <laughs> So will Maybe you go punch him in the way. nose real fast? <laughs> I I already rolled, so we got to go with this. Um, forty eight mm -hmm. <laughs> is what I rolled. All right. So you got a forty eight. You want to shoot it like point blank in the face because it it has an extended neck and its head's pretty close to you right now. Oh, can I make? Can I hit his neck? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can say you'll you'll aim for a spot on the body that won't last year. Yeah, let's go with the neck because now that right. I don't have my amulet and I've been hit, I should probably not be so... Yeah. Alright. So yeah, you're gonna fire off and go for a blast on the furthest section of the neck. And we'll use that 40... I believe, I believe it was a 48, which, which would yep. hit. And what do we got for damage? Alright, let me roll all this. Plus I'll get some back from my vampire or whatever I took. Dracula. Alright. Uh, that is a 77. Alright. Firing off that large shot, it explodes down on the neck after taking that damage. Um, you were going to notice a barrier around its body. And then the barrier quickly dissipates. <laughs> As it seems it's able to activate the power of the amulet. I hate him so much. So that <laughs> means I don't get Dracula either, right? Uh, yes, that means you don't get Dracula either on that. Uh. It, it gives off a mighty roar as the amulet hangs off on the end of its tongue, using it as a lure. 
Tex-Mex, I implore you, take this asshole down. I'm going to use my staff of the big freaky skull, and I'm going to use four charges on it to fire a giant skull projectile at it and aim right for the gills. Okay. That is a 105 to hit. That will hit. And I can't crit, so... Uh, strong poison. 36 damage. All right. And so, is it, does the uh, freaks upon hit work with this thing? Does it freak out? So I will say with the damage that it has taken before, getting worn out area on its shell, that blast of the big freaky skull, continuing the damage hole onto it, I will say at this point, it is now kind of like tucking its head into its shell. It's very, it's flinching. It's kind of walking around and it looks like it's uh, trying to take like a, a, a bit of a scuttle away now. So it's just, it's looking a bit like uh, worn, worn out. Um, it looks like it's not completely freaked, but it looks as though, like it seems like it's freaked. It's just a little hard to tell with it being a massive turtle. Um, so at this point, I will say that, yeah, it's, it's going to try to like tuck its limbs inward and it looks like it's trying to tuck everything in, in some attempt to drastically then jut outward with it for a big boost of speed. So it looks like it's trying to like kind of charge up and tuck away and get all defensive. Um, so it's going to effectively... Uh, take its turn to do that, to kind of like tuck in, crouch up, dive in the swamp, and you see its head like rearing up like it's trying to jump like an alligator. Um, so it's going to take its turn to do that. Can I use my uh, move action to throw a healing serum at uh, Willa May? I'm yes. not too bad. I'm at 87. Okay. Well, I'm I'm really close, so I figured I'd help you out before I die. <laughs> Why don't you take it? It's a standard action. I can't, or yeah, I'd have to. Well, I could. Because on this one, did he turn his back to, to us, time. or is he facing us? He was facing you. Tur- Turtle was facing you. Um, he then kind of did like a bit of a turnaround, big old jump, leaped into the swamp. He jumped very high. He does big do jumps, a, barrels through the ground. Do I get a shot at him? Uh, you can get an attack. I believe you get an attack of opportunity because he was close enough for that. I want to shoot him in his asshole. <laughs> well, an attack of opportunity would be a melee attack. Oh, I can't shoot as him. It's, as it's as it's like as it's jumping away, you can give an attempt to give like a good old like swipe at it. Uh, I only have unarmed strike. With a 93. That hits, yeah. Very weak. Smallest result. And that's going to be hitting it right in its opening where where the armor was whittled away on the chest. Oh, damn it. So that looks like it's a 39. All right. You give a big old punch on the uh, armorless chest of the turtle. Um, all of you can begin to feel this weight really kick in, where all of you feel incredibly heavy. Like, like, like this is the last you can do of the battle, is this final desperate attempt to give these big old punches, but in the end be very weighed down. Um, yeah. uh, what are the... Re- what do the rest of you get? I'm going to do the same thing. All right. That is a 76 to hit. That hits. And 86 damage. All right. I'm going to take its uh, bludgeoning damage. or with, uh, with melee attacks, I assume bludgeoning. But you can have it be whatever damage as long as it's like consistent. Okay. Um, so yeah, big old punch to that like open spot as well. Does Yuki does Ukulele also try to take an attack of opportunity, just like a free pot shot or no? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to give him a kick to the rear. 
All right, I kick him the turtle bomb. All right. <laughs> I got a 17 to hit. All right, it's got a big turtle bomb. You don't get it square, but you can at least attempt to get some kind of damage in there. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Seven. All right, it is the tiniest bit of nothing, but from the momentum of it jumping, you feel like it has so much force behind it. Your friends get those good shots right in the opening spot as it kind of flies through the air and then dives into the swamp, kind of uh, bellowing away. Yeah, I've got um, those, uh, really, really pointy, like Mexican cowboy boots. Bing. You know what I'm talking about. We are not leaving here until I get that turtle. If I have to off sift through turtle shit for my amulet, I will do it. Off in the distance, you hear some guitar playing. But it's hey, different guitar playing. <laughs> It sounds like a different guitar. It sounds tuned to different. It's tuned Which very low. Head? It's coming off from the plains. It's coming off from the direction uh, where all of you were heading. The it was like out in the fields of and the turtle. Yep, opposite direction of the turtle coming out. There looks to be someone playing the guitars, walking around. Uh, looks to be wearing knight's greaves, uh, shaped like cowboy boots. Good old denim pants, a flannel shirt, the red and black with the pattern. Um, looks to just kind of be wearing that open chested, big old beard, cowboy hat. Uh, looks to be walking around with a with a guitar, a flask around his waist, and and a stogie hanging out his mouth. And he just looks to be playing the guitar, singing songs to himself. And he looks to be getting closer to the party. Um, he looks to be a merry man of sorts, uh, real tall, looking sturdy, broad-shouldered, but doesn't look to be any kind of a heinous threat. Looks too well-kept for that. Well, I am, uh, too... I don't give a crap about him. I'm looking for this turtle. <laughs> my fists are clenched and I have my eyes on the swamp. He gives a nod and a tip of his hat. Well, howdy, partner. How's everybody doing here? We're doing just fine without you. Why don't you just walk on there, minstrel? <laughs> well, Man, all I'm right, all right. New guitarists in this party. Oh, Unless I see. Unless you know anything about a giant asshole lion turtle. Well, what... What'd I'm you say? Playing my guitar real aggressive like, and I'm gonna like slowly <laughs> circle this guy, like eyeballing him, like mad dogging him, really giving him the eye business. We got West Side Kill Sector going on. <laughs> well, well, if you take a looky here, this is a good one. Well, this is what I'm thinking. What I'd like to do. So I'd like to hear about this snapping turtle of yours. Because I've been hanging down, I've been playing some songs, I've been razzing some rights. And this guy looks like he's playing some good tunes too. I said asshole lion turtle, how do you know it's a snapping turtle? <laughs> I think he's aligned with the turtle, kill him! <laughs> Well, hold on. What I'm saying is that it sounds to me... Oh, he's backpedaling. He's backpedaling, Willa May. <laughs> I'm not backpedaling, boy. It sounds like they found my old dog, Blue. That big, old, big old mouth about yay high. Crazy eyes. Yeah. You know him? You better get him up here. He took something that belongs to me. I've been looking for my dog Blue for a long time. I've heard, I've heard so many rumors that I might be finding him here, but I've been looking and looking and looking, and Blue won't come. I've been calling Blue. I've been playing his song. I've been looking everywhere for my old Blue. Is he generally aggressive? Because he attacked us out of the blue. Oh, not to me. Well, 
uh, he he uh, takes a little bit of a turn, puts his puts his guitar down as there's this large beast in the swamp reared up, getting ready to jump out of the water, poking its eyes out, kind of walks over, playing his tunes a little bit. Well, if you look at that, it looks like all of you warned him out. That's a good thing. He needed a good play. Needs a little, a little rough every now and again. Then he takes his long hibernation. Takes his big long nap before he wakes up again and comes on around. I was looking for him because I know he wanted to have a battle. And it looks like you all took care of that for me. Much obliged. Okay, so he hibernates, you're saying. You do realize that your little dog, Blue, is eating families and children. Oh, I don't know if Blue did all that. Blue mainly gets down those big, sturdy gladiators. Really needs that for that, uh, that energy level, that protein count. Kids just don't have the protein for something like that. That's, that's like a snack. He wouldn't bother. That might have been other incidents. There's, you'd be, you'd be curious. All the legends, the cryptids, the legends, all the things that surround natural parks, all the disappearances. It's strange. Weird happenings go on. And I think blue is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, you may be oh. right considering the damage we saw to what was left behind. But I need you to get that dog out of this swamp and give me back my amulet. All right, all right. Give me a minute and I'll see what I can do for you. He gives a little bit of a strum, a strum of his guitar, goes over by the water's edge. Now this song's only going to work if he's real tuckered. And I think all you did the trick. He begins playing a song, give uh, singing merriment to this. I'm gonna to try this to creature. mimic his song exactly, but I'm gonna try to play it better. <laughs> Ukulele, <laughs> if you fuck this up, I swear. <laughs> well, my old dog Blue has got a place to be, and you've got the prettiest eyes in the in the deep blue sea. Now you gotta come around another time. You gotta stay deep away before I can sigh. Some other people had you. They had a place to be. They were busting your chops. I wish I could play and be. But another time we will come again, my friend, as you will rise up and this will extend. All right, I'll see all of you later. After playing the song, you notice that the person sprinkles away into a strange dust, into an essence of the southern smokes itself. You feel as though you were visited briefly by the spirit of the West himself. The very breeze, the essence of the environment and the aura, goes down into the water, this faint, wispy smoke. The curvy wisps tickle the nose of the large beast as it sticks out its tongue and gives up the amulet back on the surface of the water. I waste no time. I grab it. And I pop him on the nose for stealing. <laughs> The large turtle gives a bit of a a bit of a grumble. It digs deep into the mud and it seems to go deeper, deeper, deeper until it comes upon one of those large diesel smelling squishy strange stones to which it seems to vanish and go somewhere else. No longer on the planet of grit. I don't know how I feel about what just happened. <laughs> the last wisps of the southern smokes drift off into the sky. As you see in a stretch limo Cadillac 
cruising through the sky, turning a corner. Well, what's going on, cats and kittens? Ba 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 baby! What's happening? The Cadillac fully lands. Well, Boogie Woogie can't stay away for long. Things had to be real fast this time. Just trying to keep the peace, you know? This is a lawless land, a crazy territory. Gotta keep some kind of sanity. Well, if you want to keep your sanity, I would not come here. It's a strange place. All kinds of things have happened here. One time there was this old geezer. He was looking for a new body. And he took the body of like a Venetian or something. A Venetian warrior. Through a trial. Giving up his own life, I believe. So he may live another, more enriching life. A continuation. Many strange events. Sometimes people just have a picnic. It's a big old snapping turtle. Big old turtle. It's curious. Now all of you hop in. We're gonna have you report back right quick. We gotta cash in and make sure things are all right. You'll get paid handsomely, I assume. The doors open wide, welcoming the party to head on in. I sit by the window with the window down since Tex-Mex smells like death. <laughs> <laughs> used to it by now. Well, I, I'm used to it unless we're in enclosed spaces. I mean, I can't imagine any of us smell too good right now being in a swamp. Apparently, it's all right. just get up, just sit over there, just sit next to me. It's fine. It's <laughs> a stretch limo Cadillac. I'm gonna sit yeah. right in the middle. I'm gonna lay out on the floor. A... You'll never take get up. Off. If you do that. <laughs> take my boots off. Put them up on your chair. Oh God! Put my, put my hands behind my head. Air out some bits. Great. <laughs> if I throw up, will that hurt you? No. It's liquid. It'd be fun, though. <laughs> it's a big car. It's all right, baby. Everywhere's a good place. I'll make sure there's no crazy liquids anywhere. But be sure to freshen up. I got med kits in the back. I got the good stuff. I got those blue orbs. I got the red squares. And I got the purple rectangles. All that good stuff. You'll get your per gauntlets, your ammunition, your HP, your magic meter, your rage bar. Whatever you have, daddy, it's going to go right back to the way it was. Fresh as a daisy. Well, I'll have me some of that. Much obliged, Boogie. Oh, yeah. Do it till you see the bottom. Good, good, good. All right. We'll be back in about a few minutes. Uh, play some tunes. Uh, what have you been brewing up lately? Ukulele, are you going to grace us with a song? Yeah, I'm going to grace you with uh, with something I just wrote. <laughs> what rhymes with turtle? <laughs> Myrtle. Hurdle. 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 <laughs> <laughs> into a great big hurdle. My favorite color is purple. Club to me, <laughs> turtle. It's going to make me curdle. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those words. Oh, we're coming up on the place. Getting closer, you uh, are now coming up on the planet Zorvek. And specifically, you are getting closer to the Architeuthis Bar and Grill. And you notice as you get closer and closer, there is something massive looming over the planet. Very quickly, as you are brought in closer to the planet's surface. Oh, this isn't good. It's not letting me land. What's it? 
We're being dragged in. There's some kind of a force going on. Oh, Everyone hold right. on. I'll land us. I'll land us. We'll land good. Everyone hold on tight. Being dragged into the planet of Zorvek. Landing in the front of the Architutus bar and grill with a thud. The doors forcing open. It looks like the place is even more in shambles than it was before. The cleanup crew is gone. Um, it just looks to be pretty messed up. Oh, this is uh, horrendous. All right, I'm not taking off. I'm going to stay with the car, though, in case I need to vacate people out of here. I'll supply some cover fire or whatever I can to assist. But all of us grouped in one place ain't going to work no good. I don't know what's going on, but that was definitely a tractor beam. You guys are right. Let's check this place out. Boogie Woogie starts uh, adjusting his mirrors. Um... Looks to be pushing a few buttons on the car, trying to get some kind of offensive capabilities online. This thing doesn't have much. Uh, I got the built-in machine gun, and I got uh, three secret special missiles. I'm not big on the weapons, Daddy. I used to mess with stuff, but that ain't part of my life no more. I've seen some crazy things. I'll back all of you up, but I'm going to be better in the car right now. The doors of the Architutus bar and grill begin just swaying open back and forth, back and forth. It seems to be creepily empty, much more Maybe vacant than normal. To send a missile in there. No? no. What, what, what about Chip? <laughs> Who? I the know Chip is. bartender. <laughs> Well, maybe can you can give him a warning. Can I peek in um, and try to see what's in there without them seeing me? Do you all wish to try to get a bit closer and, and get a better look at things? Yeah, I'm going to be right yeah. behind her, about a square, playing a scary, scary song. All right. <laughs> Something real tense. Yeah, that's that's. Maybe. Maybe Stealthy. Mission Impossible. <laughs> uh, you begin creeping closer and closer. Suddenly, the doors swing open. Someone from within walks forward. You see someone is grabbing Chip Sipper by his collar removed from out of the back he is clenching the arm of his assailant who is attempting to strangle him raised in the air you can now see the lower half of chip sipper's body clearly visible it looks similar to a root system of a tree around in the middle of it floating there looks to be a small glowing orb but besides that waist up that similar Demonic appearance. Dark, demonic, massive horned. And he is being raised up in the air, effectively. Swinging through the doors, holding Chip Sipper by his throat, is a being that all of you would know by his infamy. Or at least most would. Lord Improvisa. Also possessing these large horns, skeletal for uh, skeletal arms from the elbows down. A very uh, androgynous space demon type appearance to this demonoid. The lower portion of its body appears to be in this similar root system esque appearance, with an orb around the middle of it. Chip Sipper is thrown to the ground, looking to be hanging on by a tiny bit of his last diehard. His last singular HP as he is brought to the floor completely. Oh, all of you have caused me so many problems. I had to take out one of my colonies. I had to sweep away all that hard work. 
And you know what I found at the end? I found another one wriggling away. You know I thought there wasn't any demonoids left. I'm happy there's one more that I can squish out like a grape. And you? You're all here to entertain me now. I'm not sending my soldiers. You are not facing my grunts. You are not attacking my generals. What you have done has been a direct defense to who I am and my entire galactic empire. Now, I would like all of you to fight with your very lives, knowing that you may not live the next few seconds. Treasure your fleeting existence, mortals. For the demonoids, glorious, direct descendants of the Allfather, his more favored creations. What are you? Of man? Something else? Undead? Pathetic. All meant to be subservient. Now, shall we? Gesturing its arms outward, Emperor Visa fully shows off its fully polite, androgynous nature with a grin across its face and a bow. I think we need to teach this guy a lesson. Will it may, will it may, will make you pay, make you pay. She'll rip off your head and you'll be dead. <laughs> She'll shit in your mouth. I, I don't know about all that, but I mean, if you <laughs> crack here in his heart, continue. finger right where you are in the south. <laughs> That's in your cornhole, buddy. <laughs> She's gonna do it. <laughs> Boogie Woogie is looking absolutely terrified. In his vehicle, you can tell he definitely recognizes Emperor Visa and is very uneasy, but looks to be trying to prepare some kind of means to deal with him. Um, you notice that upon seeing this, Boogie Woogie gets out of the vehicle and has a very serious expression. He pops his collar very hard and begins a slow walk towards the party. With a stern yet supportive look on his face. Can I try to do some sort of signal to Boogie Woogie, like, get Chip out of here? Yes, you can. I don't you, want you to can even, say it. You, 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 you can exclaim as much of just like, get Chip out of here! Because it All looks right. like Visa is going to strike at any moment. Alright. I'll, I'll yell that at him. Alright. You can yell to get Chip out of here. You notice that Boogie Woogie looks like he was trying to muster the courage to fight? And then you see it that quickly washes over as you see him try to take a quick tie, a quick dive towards uh, uh, Chip Sipper to try to get him like out of there. Um, while this is happening, Improvisa is going to immediately attack and is going to begin the assault on the party. Um, it looks as though his attention is away from Chip, so it looks as though Boogie's going to attempt to get Chip away, and Improvisa is going to begin combat with the party. So the first thing that is going to happen is all of you are going to see a purple tint over the entire area for a very brief moment. There's going to be a very quick view of an amethyst glow uh, throughout the entire world you're standing on and emanating from from the Lord. Uh, He's the next thing that is prince to destroy us. <laughs> Run. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to see a barrier form around this being. And the next thing that is going to happen is it is going to bring all of its fingers together, close its eyes tight. All of you are going to feel a force around your body. It is not going to do anything at all yet. It looks as though all of you have enough basic fortitude to shake it off. You're at high enough health. He rolled poor on it. You're, you were able to shake off a weird mind effect. You could feel Emperor Visa try to leech into your mind. After oh, seeing what? that... I didn't get oh, possessed. 
That's and Revisa all. low, very low. So you get a sense of all oh, bad stuff happening here. In realizing, very basic low effort means won't handle the party. Well, then I'm going to have to try something else. After this, there is going to be a barrage of finger beams that are going to head towards the party. So a 76 hits everyone. All right. Every single member of the party receives 87 beam damage. Precious amulet. All right. <laughs> the amulet takes out... Uh, the damage that you would receive. Although it is a barrage, it's the type of barrage where every hit from the barrage gets negated by it. Like, they weren't separate enough to hurt you. Alright. <clears throat> and yeah, after that, it is now the player turn. Emperor Visa is six... Uh, wait, I'm sorry, not six... Well, yeah, I would say... No, that's eight squares. Eight squares away from the party. And Emperor Visa has a... Uh, a bit of an aura. Kind of like this orb of energy around his body right now. Like floating in the air. Slightly. I want to wait for Boogie to get Chip out of there before I do anything. Okay. So, yeah. So the next thing that would happen, I think, would be that with Chip. So, Chip's down. Um... Chips unconscious. Boogie Woogie, you see, is going to take bounds, and you notice with his bounds, you are going to see his platform shoes extend 15 feet every step in the air, helping his bounds further, having these uh, collapsing telescoping platform shoes. So getting a real good run start, really making use out of that in the distraction of the party and Improvisa trying to focus its mind on all of you, you notice he is able to use the double move, bolt the chip, grab on, get in the vehicle, get them all secure. They're not out of there, but it looks like he at least like has chip like in the vehicle trying to get ready to like take off. Then I will shoot. All right. With a 85. All right. You notice Emperor Visa, even with the barrier, tries to dodge the hardy attack, but still takes it brunt force on. Okay, so this is piercing. So that would be 71. All right. Blasting off that large explosion, you notice cracks are going to start to appear on, on the barrier. It's not going to be shattered, but it looks as though damage is being done to it. This, uh, this psychic energy barrier. And I will bow to him. Empervisa seems... <laughs> em Empervisa gives a, a muffled cackle from within the energy orb. In response. Text mix. I didn't know if you were going to go first and start playing, or are you already going and playing? Oh, yeah, I'm playing. That, that's just... That's just a gimme. I've been assuming he's playing, so yeah, I hope so. Well, I knew last time that playing. we should assume that he's going first, so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> he's going to bring out his uh, big freaky skull staff and do the firing the... using the four charges to fire the big skull. And... <clears throat> you know what I really hate? What really I don't can't stand is a bully. I don't like bullies. Never liked them in my life. Don't like them now. 73 to hit. Yep, that will hit. 109 damage. All right. So with the blast of that skull, that is going to slam into the barrier. And the barrier is going to shatter. Emperor Visa taking no damage, but it is going to collapse like shards of ice onto the ground, crumbling into a thin liquid before dissipating. Emperor Visa watches as the uh, barrier falls around him with a with a calm, uh, slightly frustrated, but uh, concerned in his thinking. 
starting to think about the next, the next phase, the next plan. Does that conclude the party turn? I'm done. Yep. All right. So next would be Boogie Woogie is going to try to get Chip Sipper completely out of there. So it looks as though Chip Sipper from within is going to be taking the small remainder of some of the healing gimmick he has on him, and he's going to try to use it on Chip Sipper. Like all the little bits he had. He only brought enough for the party, but he's got some little odds and ends in the corner. Scrape the corners, get the rest of the tube out best he can, trying to do what he can with Chip. And it looks like the two of them are trying to figure something out. And that will pretty much conclude their turn as Chip comes they're trying to figure something out. Uh, getting lift off. Alrighty. So next, we will have Improvisa. Alrighty. Hold on here, let's see if this works. Um, so once again, there is a strange mind effect that is trying to overtake the party, but all of you managed to shrug it off this type of mental effect, uh, a lot of it is on Emperor Visa's end to initiate, but you manage to shake it off, not having any of that. Um, a new barrier does not form around Emperor Visa, but now, that Dark Lord is now trying to develop a large cylinder of energy, which would come out into a colossal cone of blinding light. It's something where it starts off as thin as a pin and then very quickly expands into a wide open cone area of just blinding energy. Um, in doing this, Ember Visa is going to bring both hands together, let out a mighty scream. The, the vines and the, um, and the root system of the lower portion of the body is going to form into a perfect sphere and that little energy bit is going to glow. Alright, so yeah, a 99 hits everyone. Um, that being said, it is also a crit. So, this big enveloping area is going to encompass everyone. How big and is every how big of an area it would yeah. be tw it's a 12 square cone so that's gonna that's gonna cover everyone well we'll, we'll be the uh, three of you not the not the other people um I'm so going to jump mm -hmm. in the air and do kind of a little flurry and uh i don't know play a weird guitar note that kind of uh, I don't know, disrupts whatever it is he's doing and use my perfect defense to ignore the damage and effects of this attack. Okay, does anyone else do something similar to that as well? I just have my amulet. <laughs> okay, so so your amulet is going to ping off um, as, as you feel this like massive torrent of energy cascade over you. Um, Tex-Mex, do you use a defensive capability? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been hit by it once, so no. He's gonna just wait it out. Okay, you're gonna wait it out. Alrighty. So, though, so let me see here. Um, so, with this being a crit, those that used a defensive capability are going to take half effectively, with it being like this big, continuous, onward, homing thing. It's something where, um, so what's going to happen here is, yeah, those that use a defensive capability are going to take normal, or okay. just going to take normal. Not so it would be effectively a normal hit then? It would be effectively a normal hit for those that use the defensive capability, where it's like you took some of the damage before getting out of there, because it's so fast that... You only took so much of it. With it being a crit, that's Emperor Visa's crit effect is like, all right, they're going to do a defensive thing. So this is going to just like nullify one of them effectively. So something where you use one of them, you take half. 
I'll take it. Um. All right. Let's get some damage. All right. And uh, okay. All right, those that used a defensive capability, you were going to receive 100 beam damage. He's going to take some of that back. And Tex-Mex, you will take 200 beam damage. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's fine. Well, that brings out my low morale, so now I have negative 10 on all my rolls. See, Tex, Tex was thinking, like, it's some kind of, like, weird time thing. Like, it was just waiting for, like, a time limit to go off. So he... Yeah, it's fine. He he, he made a bad choice. He, he lived a good life. He, he kind of gave you some, uh... You're not going to take any defensive actions? <laughs> And he took a hundred damage right from my threshold reflector. He he will take damage from the threshold, so the first bits of damage are going to be done like directly onto him. All right. And and with that damage being done, like that faint little bit of blood is going to be seen on Emperor Visa. This little faint like dark black film. And it just kind of looks down at it and, and has that grin, like, ready to continue the confrontation. Tex-Mex is, like, lit up completely and gone away, like a flash before everyone's eyes. Does Tex-Mex have any last words before he was completely upswept in the light? You know what I hate? And that's all he says. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Swept away. So after the the initial mourning in the pain of the loss of an ally, you can see those last bits of dust and ash, those last little tiny speckles and sparkles of his body seem to float off into those southern smokes, go off into that massive atmosphere, that wild blue yonder. You see it reconnect and go off, similar to the spirit of the West, in connection, in death. When the dust clears after that mighty attack, Emperor Visa stands ready to continue the assault, grinning at the party. Oh, well, that's one of them. And that was the one I was curious about. That one would have made a great disciple or acolyte. Definitely would have some fixings for the kinds of things that I want to do. Now, as of the rest of you, there's you looking down in the dumps. And then there's you still playing a song. I feel like your life is pretty sad if the people you love and lose doesn't affect you. Willamay, well. and you're a turd. Willamay, a <laughs> bond is a word. You have the worst jester I've ever seen. Lick my butt, you fucking nut. Cause Willamay, it will, uh, put you in the grave today. Both of you to assume I have that kind of anatomy. <laughs> but Every it will be over soon enough. Alright, well, one, I have to address that yes, he may not be the best, however, he is mine. What? And you're my songster. And Willem two. May has taken a hit on the head. It's a good <laughs> thing that she is not dead. And because two. guitar Gavin Gristle is the best. And two, uh, <laughs> two, two. I don't want to know about your butthole or non-existent butthole. <laughs> um, ukulele. I got. I'm down to sixty. 
<laughs> but well, if I fuck, because I gotta spend my action and resurrect the goddamn mummy. Okay, well, if I can hit him, I get I get stuff back. So this all hedges on me. So I'm dead. You better hit him. I I'm not giving you a bonus this round. <laughs> oh shit! So well, and I'm down ten. So normally this Wait, is plus ten. Wait, why don't you let me go f first? Okay. Oh, no, probably wouldn't count. I can use a full round action to. Uh, Call all of Tex Mex's atoms back from the <laughs> infinite grasp of the universe into one mass that takes form back into his flesh, calls his spirit back from the peaceful or I don't know, torturous uh, <laughs> existence they were at, and uh, deposits his body right back where it was with half health. You are you are painfully ripped away from the bliss of the afterlife and brought right back down into combat, face to face with that same maniacal emperor that you were facing before. Almost as quickly as you were disintegrated, you you feel what almost feels like weeks of drifting off into the afterlife. Then you are jerked back. You know what I hate. <laughs> 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 Finally find some peace and fucking bring me back. <laughs> well, you better appreciate that because that's reserved for Willa May. <laughs> now my question is, since I am now at negative 10 with my low morale and my micro missile launcher has plus 10, it essentially just evens out, correct? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky. 76. Oh my god. All right. Emperor Visa sees it coming, tries to teleport away, can't, takes the missile. You see that, uh, you see that, uh, uncertainty of overconfidence as the missile collides directly with its chest. 54. All and I right. get that back, so I'm doing a little better yep. now. Missile makes contact, detonates. Um, from there, you see this this strange figure still stands, still with a whole lot of vigor. A bit worn down, some of its tricks not working, its barrier destroyed, definitely getting increasingly more frustrated. But still a threat. Do you do anything else with your turn? That is all... well... I'll activate the spike cloak for this round. Okay. And then that's it. Alright, and... Boogie Woogie and Chip Sipper, I'll say Chip Sipper has come to. On the inside, Boogie Woogie and Chip have found a way to secure Chip in his roots deep inside of the limo itself. Uh, using his natural given demonoid ability to link with this object. In doing so, you see the vehicle just take off in a straight line, heading towards one of those weird rocks at an incredible rate, and then very quickly phasing into it, and then afterward one of Emperor Visa's blasts like blowing the rock away. But all of you get a feeling that Seems like they got away safe, but you don't. They probably don't know where they would end up, and you guys don't know where they ended up. But somewhere safer than that. They are seemingly taken from the map as of now. Um. In after that happening, Emperor is gonna start to seem a little, a little bit frustrated. I find it quite amusing. You get taken out, and you stand right back up. All righty. I think I've learned what I need to learn. I've had enough of fighting in this form. Give me a moment, please. Emperor Visa begins cracking their neck. Um, in doing so, you're going to see that the body is going to drastically expand. Going from its small, more diminutive size... Um, starting off as medium, this thing is now going to get to the size of that snapping turtle. 
and then very quickly nine times that size. Before long, it seems to almost encompass the entire environment. This dark blue misty fog, almost like a massive phantom or apparition. Taking up all of your perception, you close your eyes, it's there, you open it, it's there. It is entirely encompassing you. And the last bits of humanity that you see before taking on the state. You hear the voice of Lord Emperor Visa before everything goes blue. Not many have pushed me to go this far, but I'm done playing games. I just want to have some fun now. Puffering off into these billowing smoke clouds, you see a large, bantamly apparition. One of the largest creatures you have ever seen before. Clawed feet, massively toothed tusks hanging out, many scorpion tails coming from its back, stingers and hooks, many wings. A phantom abomination stands before you, letting out a mighty roar. It makes its presence known. It begins to writhe around, many attacks. Due to everyone's evasion, none of you are harmed by the initial onslaught, the force of its roar, the swinging of its many tails and its arms and its stomps. But you can tell one wrong movement could easily, easily take out the day. And I will say it is now going to be the player turn as all of its limbs are readying for its next attack, and it seems as though its mouth is charging up a large laser. It's making me real nervous there, Willa May. <laughs> I want to shoot at his mouth. Okay. And low, low morale doesn't work because he was resurrected, right? Right. I should have taken that last time. Oh, I'm well. I'm going to go first, Willa May. Go. Do it. <laughs> Scared. All right, I'm going to uh, play my song um, and then shoot three healing beams. Willa May, did you get hurt? Uh, I'm down like 46. All right, two at Tex Mex and one at Willa May. Let's see here. A hit, a hit, and a hit. Um. The lowest I got was a 12, and all I need is a 10. So, for Tex Mex, heal yourself for 99. Nice. And Willem A, 78. Woohoo! And that means you're not playing, right? No, I am playing. I can do two actions. As long as I don't Okay. Take quick action. All right, you all done? I can take two long actions, two whatever actions. Yes, I am done. I want to shoot this guy in his laser mouth. Right in his laser mouth. I'm gonna try. A okay. hundred and five. I can't crit. You definitely hit the laser mouth. Seventy-six. All right. <clears throat> Shooting right down from the opening of a large old blast, you see spurts of energy come out from inside of its body. Um, being a weird gaseous form, this would have downed anything organic, probably. It doesn't seem to have any kind of organs or insides, but that good direct hit definitely seems to be dissipating some of that, like, beam energy it was trying to gather up. Possibly lowering the damage when it does eventually release. <clears throat> That's it, except I keep forgetting my armor and taking all the damage. <laughs> okay. And we have Tex-Max. 
I'm going to use the same thing I've been doing. It works pretty well. So a big freaky skull flying out his mouth. All right. A 33 to hit. All right. That very big. 99 damage. Nice. All right. Another big old blast. But this form is real big. Like you saw the damage you were doing to that large cryptid of a turtle before and these attacks as much as they're very hard it seems like quite a battle to get in form of how many of a formed creature however it does seem to be chipping away a lot of those shots in the same spot around the head continual in the mouth area do seem to be effective next is going to be emperor visa the first thing that is going to happen is da, 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 everyone in the party is going to receive 50 damage as the residual psychic energy thing set up from before is going to click off um so Willamay's defensive means will like chip that away so you won't okay. take that okay and then everyone else is going to take this 50 it is not going to be any specific damage type it's just going to be damage um, kind of psychic right on the brain. Um, the next thing that is going to happen after that, uh, clicks away, this form two is going to once again try to do a bunch of attacks with its arms, with its legs, with its stomping around all of its different parts. Um, all right, so a 76 is going to hit, and so with these large sweeping motions, these swings of the arms in this massive tantrum, um, let's see, Willem A, you are going to take 96 bludgeoning damage as you are effectively trampled around and attacked by the legs and arms and whatnot. Before we do that, I'm going to activate my... Um, let's uh, peril port and get her out of there before she's okay. Damage. Okay. So I will say you will do the peril port. You will get her out of there, but you will receive that damage. Me? Okay. No. <laughs> Next, Max. Oh, I was gonna say at least if I get damaged, he gets hurt back. So that's okay. How much was that? 90... 96. you've achieved. <laughs> 96 bludgeoning. So you're definitely able to go in, prevent the damage, because these are just big, massive, sweeping, like, effectively, like, area attacks. But it'll be where you will take damage, but you will be able to get to nullify anything happening to Willem Um... That being said, ukulele, you will also receive the 96 bludgeoning damage. Um, pretty much from this, uh, from the uh, tantrum of it, swinging around and doing its thing. Uh, like before, a lot of the attacks are much more aimless. The previous forms seem very focused and calculated, but this one, there's a lot of swings going around with large minuses that are missing you guys wildly, or that you're weaving and ducking behind as this multi-limbed form begins its assault. Um, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to jump in the air, open that mouth real wide, and try to cast its beam downward onto the party. Alright. So let's see here. This is going to do uh, half to everyone. So, um... Due to Will May's carefully placed shot earlier, everyone is only going to receive 50 beam damage. And this will be unaffected by any kind of reductions or anything like that. Like, everyone will take just like a static, like, 50 damage. Um, I try to go for its big, massive mouth beam super move, but due to getting nullified earlier, shots in the mouth, it got some poor rolls. Everyone seems to do pretty well. All of you manage to get up your arms in time and duck and really try to, like, holster down and attack that. You feel like in almost any other way would have taken you out. And I'm dead again. Um, Even my armor doesn't 
to absorb any of that? Uh, the it... armor won't. It's it's effectively typeless. Okay. Yeah. All right, you I would probably I be killed, but you I will be die-hearted back to one hit point. Oh, I can use my perfect defense, right? Uh, yeah. Sweet. Okay, so I'm still alive. Wait, I thought we okay. could be defensive like that. Um, that was just not for the previous thing, because it was a crit. Oh, okay, alright. I'm gonna use my yeah. teleport then. Alright. Wait, no. No, I'm gonna use Die Hard. I'm gonna okay. Me and then come back over. You're, 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 gonna, you're gonna let it hit and do that Die Hard. Alright. Yeah. So that big, that big beam rains down, hits the party. You see this thing just writhing around, weaving and dodging and doing its whole thing. You see it try to continuously go for these big open swings. However, you notice that it has a massive opening. It tried to go for a big coup de gras on the party, just a big overhand thing. Got a big, terrible crit is extremely wide open uh, for attacks at this point. You realize this is your last hoorah to do something to this thing. Whether it's have a glorious death before you die, actually manage to repel it, you are beginning to believe this thing might be unkillable, at least for you. But what will happen next? It is up to the party. You going first, ukulele? Yeah, so... <laughs> I am not going to be playing my music. What's everybody down? I'm looking decent. I have 110 right now. I'm at 46. Alright, so I'm going to use uh, one of my actions to boost impact myself to full health. And then I will shoot... What's your maximum hit points there, Tex Max? 160. I'm going to shoot Tex Max twice and Willamé once. Alright. Let's see. We got a, a hit and a hit and a hit. So, Tex Max, 80 points of damage. I'm sorry, 80 points of healing. And Willamé, 15 whole points of healing. You heal like I do. <laughs> hey, I heal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've gotten several healing rolls off. <laughs> even if they're small. Yep, three. sustain. So, no 10% uh, bonus this time. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is perhaps roll a perception to see if I can see if this thing has any weak spots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I rolled a seven. I just know he's there. <laughs> um, the most you understand is what you understood before, and that was when he charges the mouth beam, it looks like interrupting or shooting in the mouth when he does it will reduce the damage when it happens or possibly cause collateral damage to uh, to him. Um, as of right now, it doesn't look like he's doing that move, but you just have a slightly more reinforcement to that which you already knew. I still want to aim for the mouth. Okay. Ho hopefully I burn that seven. Ugh! 26. <laughs> All right. It's real big. You know you're at least going to hit the neck area. You're going to hit something. Give it a big old shoot. 84. All right. That definitely hits. I'm back to full health. And I think all right. that's all I want to do. So after another large explosion, getting off that good damage due to the size of this enemy, you're able to really get those good shots off without taking multiple turns or getting in weird positions. Uh, it seems that this continual damage is it's still bringing out the fight pretty well, similar to the previous phase. Um, Alright, Tex-Mex. Up to you. You can do it. Alright, big ol' skull right in the mouth. 38 to hit. That will hit. I won't hit right in the mouth, but you will hit it. Actually, it's a 
58 because it's got a plus 20. So, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. poison. Uh, 57 to hit or 57 damage. All right. You fire off that big freaky skull. You notice that is. Uh, once again, a very difficult target to freak, but that consistent, reliable damage blasted off, still being fired around at the same spot. You now noticed after shooting that off, no matter what happens next, all of you held your own against a very powerful cosmic entity. One of a one of those space emperor archetypes, if you will. And this emperor, even in its uh, maddened king estate flailing around seems to give some kind of nod and recognition of power and it seems like it wants to grant a glorified death in doing this the all the ends of its many few fingered hands are going to glow a more brighter blue around the outside as its thousand arm form begins undulating and posing the many fingers take up many signs as it looks like it's readying some kind of uh final technique after raising to the sky, eclipsing the sun, and baking the area in a black and blue glow. Uh, very suddenly there is going to be a voice heard off on the side of the uh, eclipsed battlefield. Uh, walking up over on the side. Hey boss! Hey boss! After going in this big, eclipsal kind of crazy form, still staying in there. We gotta go! We gotta get out of here! There's crazy stuff going in the furthest reaches! Your territory is in jeopardy, man! We gotta go right now! All the bigger supervillains are having at it! This massive eclipsed form is going to... Slowly... Um, cave in on itself. Uh, going back into um, Emperviza's first state. Emperviza is then going to go floating over to like this like little armored kind of ratty goblin henchman fella. Could you repeat that one more time? Oh, it's just exactly like I said. In the unknown reaches over there, a, a loose finger beam is going to come off over Emperviza's shoulder, like blasting him into the ground. <laughs> That's all I need to know. You all fought valiantly, but I must leave. I prefer to leave fights this way, so we may have a better one down the lines. I have matters to attend to. I have an empire to upkeep. And some of the most dastardly fiends that you would normally be contending with are off in the universe after my damn booty! Well, it's mine, damn it, and I've got a territory to protect, and a galactic empire to uphold. I leave you with your lives. You at least deserve that. Emperor Visa marches off, uh, close, uh, closer to the Arcatuthis Bar and Grill, taking up inside of the massive saucer overhanging the planet. It readies for liftoff. And without a trace, it takes off, off into space, further in the west. Not the core systems where you find the gladiators. Not this outward system where all of you are in the west, the lawless land. Anything goes, Wild West rules. But further, deeper into the universe, where some of the worst fiends now are currently contending to see who's who and what's what. Balancing each other off. In, in the end. So after some time, the dust is going to settle. I'll, I'll let the players have a little bit of interaction, and then we'll hit the finale here. And we'll just hit the credits. I think we need to go after that asshole. <laughs> I almost had him. I did. I'm just going to uh, retune my guitar and start playing it aggressively. Right behind Willem A. <laughs> I will look you... for Chip. All What's right. That, Tex? I'm with you. I think we put an end to that guy. 
How was so death, it... by the way? Glorious. <laughs> We're definitely going after him then. Oh, man. <laughs> like nothing ever. Oh, man, it's so great. Well, I'm glad you're back for my own selfish reasons. Glad you're happy. <laughs> In your travels around looking for Chip, uh, I will say that eventually you will all end up coming across him in one of the many various bars he's upkeeping. This time it seems to be in a cathedral castle in the land of Helvania, serving up drinks in this Halloween-themed countryside, similar to that of uh, those in fairy tales of Eastern Europe. After catching up with Chip, hanging out in there, you get a little bit of more info before we conclude our adventure. Oh, yeah, it was crazy, I'm telling you. Well, we ended up weaving into those weird squishy rock things. I call them diesel chunks, but we kind of went weaving in and out of them a whole bunch. And we went from pretty similar places from one world to the next. Seems like they're uh, some kind of object used to uh, warp things around. Almost like a fold in space. You come in one end and you pop out the other. But it you go into like a north magnetic pole almost and come up the south magnetic pole. I'm not a scientist. I'm, I just know words. But anyway, it was crazy. I went in and out. It was like Swiss cheese. Like putting like a thing of twine through it. It was crazy. But I will say that uh, I wouldn't recommend going after... Lord Emperor Visa, he's, uh, you're all lucky to be alive. That's, uh, quite an accomplishment. Well, uh, we're not scared of death, but, you know, I know you went through an ordeal, but, but you did promise to pay us. Oh, yeah, I, I did. I, I mean, Emperor Visa definitely, uh, put a damper on the Architeuthis. Um, on the outside, it didn't look like there was much damage, but that was kind of the cruel joke. Everything else was obliterated. Everything else was wrecked. I, uh... I've got payment, but quite frankly, I, I don't know if I have it right now. I mean, I hope that's okay, but... Guy's been going through a lot lately. Well, I, I'm not one to kick, kick someone when they're down, so I mean, I'll just... We'll put it on your tab. What? Oh, that's a good one. I like that. What a spirit, Willamé. Really picking me up. I, I now, can't say the same for my comrades here. I mean, Tex-Mex might have a problem with that, but you'll have to take that up with him. Well, you're going to be paid handsomely, and I can guarantee you'll get a little bit of interest. It should work out fine. But, <laughs> as I said before, that, uh... That Improvisa guy, um, if you want to try to go after him, the place that he's in right now is the most dangerous part of the universe. People don't last moments out there. All of you were lucky. You made it through a first form into a second one. That almost never happens. But, uh, I'll have you know that, uh, he's probably got more than that. Rumor is he's got a third in its... It's a doozy. It's like a, it's like a god killer, planet shatterer thing. Like, you don't even want to. Like, the first form is like an ant next to what it can become exponentially. Ah, uh, I mean, in case you didn't put it together, cause you guys saw my, uh, you saw my roots, didn't ya? You know the story. You see, I'm not a, maybe not what I appear. Well, it turns out, well, I'm uh, one of those demonoids. Uh, same, same kind of critter that Emperor Visa is. Same kind of thing. You didn't know that? Well, I didn't really know how many of us there were. My understanding was uh, that guy and his, and his mom went around and uh, rounded up the rest of the people and took them out. 
It's kind of the mentality of our people, tragically. We're like tiger shark babies. You get us all together, we're ravenous, we take each other up, and then we become more of a monster down the lines. I mean, I like to think we can go beyond that. Definitely a fan of my lifestyle, just trying to earn an honest living. I don't need my fist in any sort of force or violence or mind manipulation. It's weird. We're cosmic parasites. Creatures of the mind, if you will. But, you know, we can all kind of get beyond that stuff, but that's, uh... That's the thing that's gonna linger, honestly. But, yeah, y'all, y'all all get paid. Don't, uh... Don't worry about that. I, uh, I could always find some good work. I got places I can stay. Architutus was a real nice place, though. Uh, it was real good. Got to meet some nice people. Uh, I turned towards Tex-Mex and I'm like, did we get paid for the last job? Uh, a little funky, but I don't remember... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh. guitar pick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I gave out uh, some some stuff for that one. It wasn't anything crazy memorable. It's probably just the gold, the money, the finance. Pretty sure I helped hook you guys up with some more missions, and uh, you've been doing pretty good since. Definitely uh, clearing up the West. I have a vague memory of getting something, but uh, I was pretty drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right, little lady. I'm a bartender. I see that kind of thing. It's it's okay. It's all understood. But uh, yeah, we had a quite the scare. Uh, even Boogie Woogie almost got down on the dance floor. That would have been crazy. Guys, uh, guys, quite a fighter, I hear. Isn't any more though. Whole bunch of time went through a war. It was like a scientist or something. I'm not a hundred percent. Everything's a little, a little off. But yeah, how about a cheers? Let me make some drinks. I'll make all your favorites. Got one here, number two, and number three, right over here. He slides the drinks uh, across the bar, one, one to each, one for everyone. All right, I don't think I got any other better way to end this, but... Cheers, everyone. Now, cheers. Yes, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a ching of the glasses as everyone takes a sip. All of you know fortune is in your future, and you're surrounded by some of the well-mannered good people of the West. No shootouts in the next two minutes. No crazy fights in the alley the next week later. Everything seems genuinely peaceful. It seems as though with the absence of Lord Improvisa that much of the crime and some of the crazier scallywags went away too. That in combination with the massive mob that everyone blew away at the beginning of the adventure. It seems as though that the lawless area, at least for a moment, does not have order, still remains lawless, still remains free, but is a much better image of what it is, closer to the ideals that it is meant to embody, rather than a shadow of its former self. And with that, the spirit of the West looms overhead, playing his guitar. Big ol' grin. You all feel the spirit of the large snapping turtle finding his way to his next home. On a different planet. A different jungle world. This one more like a rainforest. There are these large apes swinging from tree to tree, beer in each hand, if not a tool, getting ready to work. Out in the woods, there's these various woodland creatures, and they gather around the sight of this large snapping turtle. But rather than the aggression that is, that is met, these beings seem to know what it wants. They begin feeding it various kinds of food, different types of gravel, some very identical to that strange geological substance that transports things. 
one of the many mysteries of the universe. Rummaging through the woods, the snapping turtle finds what it needed. Perhaps the snapping turtle, as silly as it might have been, maybe just needed a good diet. The turtle does all right. The last image we will have is uh, the ching of the glass, the piece of the party. Um, do the players have anything else to say as we sign off here? That turtle can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a happy turtle, but he won't be bothering anyone anymore. Good. Having fun on a jungle world. Pretty hard on the turtle. <laughs> it tried to take my best thing. So who ate the children? I think the turtle did it. Don't blame the turtle. <laughs> you guys love that turtle, apparently. <laughs> I don't Child love murder. that turtle. Child murder and psycho is what he is. We should have killed it right away. We should have ate him. I hear turtle meat's delicious. Look at that turtle. Turtle, turtle. My turtle. <laughs> Is he not turtle enough for your turtle club? <laughs> are you going to start a turtle club that you says you love turtles so much? Are you, are you talking to me? I'm talking to all of you guys that are in love with this turtle. I just want to kill this turtle because he killed children. I, I don't know. <laughs> poking out. Uh, everything that happened this episode, we're worried about this damn turtle. <laughs> Next time on Kill Sector, the turtle club. <laughs> <laughs> turtle gauntlet um but yeah the, the only other thing that i can think to add is just like that lasting image of improvisa's ship this large ufo cruising away far away from where he can harm anyone with sense anyone with morals anyone with a little bit of standing will at least be free from these maniacal entities at least for some time and there is a weight lifted off the universe, not just that center, not just for the gladiators, but for anyone else making a living as evil is lifted away from the land as they commence to struggle with each other in the deepest depths of the cosmos. Woo All right, and that was the gauntlet. Bam. I thought we awesome. were goners a couple times there. Yeah, I, th I thought we were No okay. way. I've got you covered. I feel like that I'm worked out good real good. Taking care of myself. It's the big hits I worry about. <clears throat> there were a lot of really well timed um explosions taking out like big groups and uh uh ta a lot of the uh, called shots, like shots right at the head, right at the chest, right at here. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was real fun. Um so I'm going to try to see what I can do with sending over that album. Okay. Uh, it was like a friend, friend of mine made an album. I'll try to send it over. Um, besides that, yeah, I would say let me know whatever y'all want to do next time for whatever the case. I definitely had fun with like some Western adventures. Um, for like a next thing as an idea because i've noticed like a um uh like one thing that i was working on which one was it uh was i like the idea that was proposed of like a like comic book like graphic novel manga anime vibe kind of thing like something where um so, so still like a gauntlet, still this like traditional kill sector stuff, but like with that kind of a flavor, you know what I mean? Um, it's like really weird for me to describe, but that was, that was my thoughts for maybe what we do next time or something. Yeah. Sounds I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to remember but, my but yeah. superhero voice. Hold Your on, hold superhero on. voice. <laughs> oh man, what was my superhero voice? I don't remember all you. I remember mm. you turned into a really weird crap. So, um, I... wait, hold on, hold on. Shit. <laughs> I, I gotta remember who my sidekick was. God damn it, I'll get it. <laughs> God damn it, I have a superhero voice. 
Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's like a good theme to bite in onto of just like that superhero graphic novel, comic book, like manga, anime, like those kinds of characters, those kinds of settings, those kinds of scenarios. So like these really, really out there kind of guys. Um, but yeah, then... can I be the chef that gives people food orgasms? <laughs> you could you could have a character like that. Yeah, yeah, that would be. <laughs> Um, like, like, really, whatever, but, like, I was thinking that would be a fun area to go with, like, these kind of extreme, it's something different, but I remember, like, uh, superhero theme was suggested, like, a few times back, and I'm like, oh, hey, and I started developing an idea, and I was trying to figure out what server I was gonna run it on, but I'm like, I think that would go really well here, like, I wanted to do some kind of, like, a, uh, of like a uh, mystery romp with tournament fights and you know that that kind of thing. So like crazy crazy characters running through a crazy setting kind of thing, you know. And I definitely want like the vibe of like each person coming in either you know, like usually having like everyone having to say something about each other, you know, like people feeling free to like having the players fight amongst each other, you know, we can do have like non-lethal hits and shit like that. Um, pretty much just, like, absolute zaniness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, and I was thinking similar to how with, like, a lot of shonens and things like that, where, uh, where it's, like, a lot of the, uh, members of the team are introduced as villains first. And I'm not saying everyone has to be a complete dick, but I'm saying (laughs) that would be a cool thing for people to be open to, where it's, like, oh, we start off with one person, and then someone comes in as a straight villain, or, like, a rival, that's the idea, is I want people to kind of mess with character dynamics of, like, is anyone rivals with each other, or enemies with each other, or different kinds of things. And I think that's what'll make the group stand out, as if it's like, okay, here's a group, they have this kind of connection. And then when we get into just the rambunctious stuff, and, like, the mechanical things, and... Yeah, I, I feel like it could be interesting. How super heroic do you want it? Do you want to go with more than ten? Um, the thing was Superman level or Batman oh God. level. Honestly, I was thinking about doing it ten, but it's a matter of like how those ten points are spent. You know what I mean? Like I was thinking about having it be ten and just being like a lot of personality going into it, where it still works if someone has the more stoic superhero. But I feel like this is a chance to really do like really more out there characters. Um bring like a craziness or if you have a reserved character it'll stand out really well because it'll be like uh it wouldn't be the norm of like everything else going on um yeah so yeah i don't know i was i i was thinking 10 points because like depending on the minuses you take or this or that the minuses are very similar to weaknesses or you know what i mean superheroes always got those um so it's like yeah, it's something where, like, I'm going to suggest, like, yeah, feel free to take weaknesses or come up with certain ideas for character dynamics or fun stuff. Like, I definitely wanted to have, like, just, like, a fun, out there, super loose energy, crazy characters, a lot of, like, weird banter, like, uh, that type of thing. So, like, specifically picking characters that can really bite into that. Um, If only Kirk would play. I can totally verbally abuse abuse Kirk. It's just chemistry. I'll invite him. I don't think it will, but I'm going to be the guy that, who tell him that Arn really wants to verbally like abuse him. <laughs> Maybe that's what he <laughs> needs: some verbal abuse. You're right. That's what he needs. <laughs> he already bullied him off. <laughs> 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 All right, I better make sure my kids are going to bed because it's almost ten o'clock. There, I put a picture of my character up. <sighs> awesome. <laughs> are you going to be five girls? No, it's just going to be a boy who dresses up like one of them. He works at a maid <laughs> cafe, who's hiding out from his. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Are we, wait, are we <laughs> superhero anime? Like. Everything yeah. in that area, like, the energy I want to go for is, like, okay. superhero, anime, graphic novel, manga, like, off-the-walls characters, like, weird setting, 
Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Bit of I mystery tournament fight. that because of children. Oh, oh yeah. But yeah, you know, no, I'm I'm into that. You know, Nick, yeah, but... take sidekick enough, you could probably be five Asian chicks. Probably <laughs> could. I should. I think they have to have like some kind of weird thing. Like, there's a guy on Captain Harlock who's addicted to making plastic models, and he. Even in space combat, he's sitting there making plastic models. So I gotta find something strange for him to do. That's, you gotta come up with a lot of weaknesses for that, but I think you could pull it off if you really tried. When are we playing next? What day? So I can put it on my marker board. Thursday, um, February. Are we still 4th. doing? Okay. Yeah. The fourth. Yep. That's the next yeah. first Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna get going, but yeah, uh, any suggestions, let me know. Um, but that's roughly what I'm thinking is like some kind of some kind of fun superhero romp, but with like you know a, a lot of influence from just comic books around the world, zany, off the walls, big standout characters, kind of like what we normally do. But I'm thinking like. Every NPC that I'm gonna have is gonna be like really, really fucking hammy. <laughs> and like you know, like it's like feel free to get like super duper duper fucking hammy. Like this is this is like the place absolutely for it. Because I want to see like how loose we can get, and then I think that's gonna. There's gonna be a lot of cool shit. I think that's that's gonna come from that. I'll so make sure drink to drink that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> That would be like get super, 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 super loose. So then it's just like, it's like big, goofy, fun, off the walls. I want to do 10 point characters so they don't get super complicated. Okay. Um, that's part of why I want to do 10. But I also want to do 10 because I feel like when you go from making 15 point guys back to 10, the 10 point builds get crazy. Because then it's like, all right, I've messed with these functions and those in a 15 point. Let me do this really compact. And I wait, think that's what will work. When did we do a fifteen point? We just did uh, today. Today. Oh fuck you guys! <laughs> that was ten. <laughs> oh, your shit! You're yeah, so I'm ten. Staying alive. <laughs> I get extra bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. The horror one was fifteen too. I think. What? <laughs> I think so. It's, we've what? done like two 15 point builds. You sons of bitches! <laughs> no, you, never you made told a 15 me that. Yeah, you what? made one. Yeah. No, I've never made a 15 point character. They've all been 10. I have what? not made oh, anything no. more than 10. You're fucking yourself. Man. Yeah, you might think they're more than 15. That's because I make them awesome, but you know. <laughs> and I spend a lot of time doing it. Oh, 15, huh? Bad. Goddamn cocksuckers. <laughs> Before we go, um, look at a, a RPG called Teenagers from Outer Space. It's an anime RPG, and it might have something on there that you guys can look at. Um, yeah. It's a show? No, it's an RPG. It's okay. called Teenagers from Outer Space. I'll send you a copy. Okay. All right. All right well, I'll, I'll work on Twitch and let you know what I find out. Look at my turds, you 15-point asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye. See y'all later. See ya.